there and we would be discussing these points anyway. It's just adding clarity to it. Anybody else? No. Okay, so we vote now. All in favor say aye. 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 And nays? Judy nay. So we have three yays, one nay. So now there's the thing I'd like to add to the agenda, and that's I would like us to discuss under new business um, whether we're cool with the person being appointed to replace Leonard being in March when new people be appointed, um, generally for boards, or if we'd like to let council know that we'd like it um, as soon as possible, that okay. that be an, an item. Got it. Thanks. Welcome. Do I have to say anything special? Do we need to vote on it? I think you need to have a majority. Yep. Vote on it? Let's okay. On it. Okay, well, so somebody at first has to say make they second it. That's your motion. So you have to make Seconded. a motion. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then we'll take a vote. All in favor, aye. Aye. And a nose, so it's unanimous. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on to public. No, if we're adopting the new one, then we're going to approve the minutes. For July 11th, did everybody look at those? Anybody? Okay, so we'll take a vote. Right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, second to. Yep. Oh, sorry, second. <laughs> I second the motion to approve the minutes. Nice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And now we move to public participation. I was just gonna say, after the vote, if you just recap, the motion was that was just approved. Makes okay, it easy before for Corey. It, so got it. Unanimous vote of Thank three you. one to do this. Thank you. The motion to <laughs> keep reminding me of that because I might need. We're working. We're all working. <laughs> Tighten her up. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll move on to public participation. Do we have anybody signed up for public participation? Oh yeah. Old agenda, I am. It basically costs 50 bucks a day to live in Boulder. These are the simple facts. You might call it short term rentals or something, but that's what, what it costs to live here. And to, to not be addressing the developers that are putting a, hi a hotel on the hill for $250,000 parking spaces. And all of the mini micro apartments that are impinging on our open space, and I just went to the open space meeting today, you know, we have a lot of expenses, and we have a lot more population, and we have a lot smaller compartments that people are living in, and that they want to get out to the open space for. And so we have a lot more maintenance and everything on our open space. There are a lot of costs associated with driving up the population in this town. And the illusion, of having affordable housing was perfectly exemplified by the 311 issue, which was this was supposed to be about site review and use review and a zoning change, and Zan said that is all you can address to the public. The whole meeting was practically taken over with people talking about affordable housing and the poor seniors and the hundred units that Gary from the Academy was proposing for his off-site proposal, which is not ever defined until you actually get the proposal going through. Now, the proposal was approved, but Mark Resin um, changed his mind, you might remember this, Crystal, in 2000 on the housing, I mean on the homeless shelter, and it's possible for people to change their minds again. This is a disaster. The fire potential for up there and people getting in and out with cars, with people, you know, ambulances coming in and people coming out that are, that are seniors, that are frail, 
This is utterly ridiculous. I listened to Karen McLoon's uh, comments. She's from the Rockefeller Foundation in Resilience, and, she, and it's remarkable what she said and what the council voted on after that. Landslides in Jackson Hole, you know, from um, when you burn down trees or take out trees, and those trees are on my open space I have purchased with my funds, and uh, those trees are not going to go down over my dead body for, so they can get fire insurance. They need to back their project off so that their defensible space is within the footprint that's necessary. Um, this is just unacceptable to have, the, then Gary, the first time he comes up with deliberations, after the first meeting's gone to 12.30 in the morning, Mason was there, you know, and oh, we can't decide this late, you know, so then we move it ahead to OAUs and ADUs got pushed ahead. That's a citywide issue for affordable housing. There's no time for anything because the city council is doing the wrong thing and they're persistently doing the wrong thing. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. And Lynn, could you state your name, yeah. your full name for the record? Lynn Siegel. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Anybody else for public participation? Okay, so we will close public participation. And next up will be community benefit project with staff. And here to present that and answer any questions you have and get your feedback are two colleagues, Phil Kleiser and Carl Geiler. And I'll turn it over to them. Good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Carl Geiler. I'm with the City Planning Department. Uh, I'm working with Phil Kleisler on the Community Benefit Land Use Code Change Project. So we wanted to present our progress uh, and just an overall overview of the project to the Housing Advisory Board to just get some feedback as we move forward. Uh, we're going to be stopping in with planning board at the beginning of August and then city council at the end of August uh, to receive input as we move forward. So tonight we're just gonna do a basic project background, uh, try to bring you up to speed, talk about the process that's currently underway. Um, we're gonna talk about the engagement and next steps of the project and then we've presented some uh, questions to the board. Uh, we've provided a memo that inc includes that content. <clears throat> So just to bring the, the board up to speed uh, on the project and just kind of the background of the development review process, the issue of community uh, benefit has come up for a number of years uh, in the community on planning board and council and, and members of the, of the community, um, particularly with site review projects and those where there are buildings that are building over the, the zoning district maximums. So um, that's why we're working on this. Um, just to give some background context, prior to 1971, uh, there wasn't actually a height limit in the city of Boulder, but based on some buildings that were, were going up, particularly of that era, 1960s, early 1970s, the, the senior center that's up the street caused concern, loss of views, um, incompatible. Uh, it led to a referendum that uh, led to the 55-foot height limit that we now have that's in the city charter. Uh, and since that time, the city has been processing what we call height modifications through what's called the site review process now. Um, basically, it allows requests above the zoning district maximum, which is typically 35 feet in most of the city. In some cases, it's 38 feet or 40 feet, but when you go above that, you're in a height modification process and you can't go above 55 feet, but when you get into a height modification, it requires planning board review and you have to meet the, the detailed site review criteria that are in the code. There's no real specific criteria related to height modifications. It really just says that you have to meet certain qualitative standards in your project uh, and show that you're compatible with adjacent buildings and, and neighborhoods to get approval. So that's been of concern. And leading up to uh, 2015, there were concerns about some of these buildings that have been approved and the, the amount of buildings going up in the community. So that led to some ordinances that were passed by council to restrict where in the city you can actually ask for these height modifications. So we're talking about you know uh, downtown, a portion of North Boulder, Uni Hill, up around 29th Street, uh, a couple limited areas like the hospital, Fraser Meadows uh, and Gun Barrel 
are on that list right now. There's a map that shows where you can request height modifications. It also s states that under certain circumstances, you can ask for a height modification if more than 40% of your floor area is permanently affordable housing. Uh, and then it sets up a couple other scenarios uh, in like industrial districts, so, so I won't go into too many details. That ordinance has been in effect since 2015 and has been renewed twice by council. So it was recently renewed by council in June. So that is valid until uh, May 31st, 2020. So that's in effect while we work on the, the community benefit project, which will hopefully bring in some new standards that relate to these types of projects. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, the 40% affordable, permanently affordable housing, at what AMI ranges is that? Uh, it just requires um, the 20%. I'm not sure what the exact AMI is. I think I, we'd have to talk to housing about the parameters of it, but they would review it for the breakdown of, of AMI. Okay. Um, so what you see on the screen right here is what I was just talking about, the, the areas where you can request a height modification, and I talked about the the affordable housing and, and the other uh, eligibility uh, standards that apply. So as far as the, the general process, uh, we have four steps up on the screen. So we're, we're basically in the process of identifying community benefits and, and exploring them further. Um, we have a pretty good list right now. Um, we're also looking at what the triggers would be. So it could be, it'll likely be height modification, but we're also looking at some other options. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. We then have to jump into defining those community benefits further. So affordable housing is a little more straightforward because we already have a construct for that in the city. It's those other community benefits like affordable commercial or art spaces that are a little more difficult to quantify and figure out how we would actually codify that in the code. So that's kind of the more complex territory that we're going to be um, walking into as, as we move forward. And then as we, we, we have some technical groups to talk about that, we would start drafting up some regulations for feedback. So what's guiding us in this is some recently adopted community um, benefit related policies that are in the comp plan. So the comp plan was adopted by council in the fall of last year and it included three new policies that talk about this. So we have enhanced community development, which identified the, the community benefits that we're currently exploring, which we have underlined on the screen. Uh, we have a special one related just for building height, basically says that where we didn't do it before, now when you do a height modification, the expectation is that there would be some sort of community benefit. It also makes it clear that permanently affordable housing is, is really kind of at the forefront of what we would expect in, in most projects that, that seek community benefit and an additional intensity. So again, the triggers we're looking at are building height, going over the height uh, limit of the district, uh, scenarios where they might ask for more density that is currently permitted in the zone uh, would trigger community benefit. Uh, we might even look at uh, getting a floor area trigger. Um, right now we don't, you know, there could be a, a very large project that may not go over the height limit that folks might find needs to provide community benefit. So it might be like an FAR a trigger um, th that we would look at. And also there might be rezonings where people are rezoning to a zone that allows for a higher intensity that could trigger community benefits. So we'd have to create new criteria for rezonings related to this. So basically what this shows is that, you know, you have your traditional building that's at two or three stories in the city. If you were to go an extra two stories, one or two stories, you'd be in, in the, the realm of community benefit and we would have a menu of options with different types of community benefit that would have to be met to do that. So as part of this exploration, uh, we've been looking at a number of case studies. Uh, we have 15 right now that we're, we're focusing on. Um, a lot of details, a lot of, of a different array of different ways of, of approaching community benefit. Most of the ones that we <coughs> see that have community benefit are uh, California communities. Um, what we found is that a lot of the community benefits that some communities require are similar to what we get through the site review process now in Boulder, but there are some that are similar to what we're looking at now for, as part of this community benefit project. So 
Um, a lot of these communities use height, floor area, and density as triggers, so we're looking at the different um, <coughs> ways that they're doing that. Affordable housing, sustainable design, green building, publicly accessible open spaces, uh, and arts and cultural uses are community benefits that we see in a lot of these communities. What we found is a lot of these communities have community benefit programs that are really meant to incentivize development in their downtowns. Um, I think Boulder's a little bit different. We're gonna be looking more citywide. We found that some communities uh, do negotiations on a case-by-case -case basis. This leads to a lot of unpredictability in the process. I think some of the guidance we've got in this process is to try to make things more predictable, uh, make it more like performance standards and make it uh, very plain in the code how you get um, additional intensity. Uh, some examples that we're looking at are uh, where they have bonuses that are quite a bit bigger than what we get in Boulder, uh, like in Austin or Seattle, we're talking you know multiple story buildings in the downtowns. We're just talking about one or two stories here in Boulder, but there's still a good examples to look at. I think the communities like for, that we're seeing right now that are most akin to Boulder, or at least uh, provide us with the best guidance, are Austin, Texas has a range of community benefits that are very similar to what we're exploring. So we're I'm gonna be looking at that further. And we were also finding that Santa Monica has a community benefits program that seems very similar to where we might go with our program in terms of the community benefits that they're looking at, but also the scales of buildings that they um, are looking at in their community. Um, so we're gonna continue developing those case studies as we move forward and, and derive some ideas from those. And I'm gonna pass it over to Phil. Yeah, Phil Kleisler, Conference of Planning. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Um, and we, this case studies document that Carl just explained, it's a pretty lengthy and detailed document, um, but we'll be doing kind of an executive summary and including that with the planning board and council packets that we can also um, share with you all um, when that is, um, becomes available. Um, so as Carl mentioned, the comprehensive plan adopted last year did include that policy 1.11 around community benefits. And some of the benefits included in that policy were quite specific, like affordable housing, while others were a bit more topic-based and a bit broader, like social services, environmental preservation, and so on. And so I, we kind of see this program and the public process that we want to have going forward as really refining those um, so that we can come up with very specific use um, definitions and criteria. Um, from that case studies document, we just wanted to maybe just throw a few on the screen so you can just see how some of the other communities um, define and establish metrics for those specific benefits. And so we, we have up here just the, you know, some on-site housing with the city of Austin, um, outdoor recreation facilities in Portland and arts and culture in Ber Berkeley. And what we're seeing, you know, along around these communities is that they all, you know, define what the benefit is pretty specifically. Um, many of them, if not all, include um, specific metrics that are proportional to the development request, or at least a way to get to that metric. And so some communities leave it until you get to the development application to develop a pro forma and determine what the community benefit requirement is. Um, and then others like the city of Austin, as you'll see when we share the document, um, also go into some enforcement provisions, kind of what happens if the site becomes non-compliant and stops providing that community benefit. And so there's a lot of considerations I think we have to make with each of these. And so it's a, it's a complex um, project, but we're looking forward to it. Um, the very, the, the final thing that we wanted to mention was the, the quantifying community benefits. And so at the end of the day, this program um, would seek to ensure that certain development applications um, provide community benefits that are proportional to the intensity and the impacts of the project. And one of the ways, and the, really the most popular and, and standard way to get to how much community benefit is through an economic study. And that study will, will benefit the city and the community in that next year as we're looking at the final program, um, those policy decisions can be informed by an understanding of, of current local economics. Um, and so what we're doing right now that we wanted to provide you an update on um, is a very narrowly focused economic study that we're gonna have flushed out by planning board and council, but we're not quite there yet. Um, really only looking at affordable housing and affordable commercial space. And so what we wanted to do is kind of put our toe in the water and see kind of what should we be expecting from these types of projects, giving a certain set of assumptions. And so in this case, and we'll forward the study to you when it's completed, 
Um, we're looking at uh, uh, five different development scenarios, all in the BR1 district, and that's around the 29th Street Mall area. Um, they're all, you know, have some common set of assumptions, like they're two acres in size. Um, and what we're doing with this analysis is to determine if the city were to grant a height modification up to that 55 feet, as well as additional residential density, what could we expect in terms of a return of community benefit given the current economic climate? So what could we require up to the point of making the project not feasible anymore? Um, so the five scenarios that we're looking at, we're looking at a base scenario just to, tr just to see what's the return to the developer if um, the current regulations are followed, height, everything. Um, we're also looking at um, a scenario where that height modification is, is, a, is a approved up to 55 feet and there's additional density on the site, but the applicant does not include community benefit, kind of as another benchmark of, of the two bookends. Um, and then we're looking at two residential scenarios, taller buildings, more density, with one of those residential scenarios for affordable housing being uh, using federal funding. And then finally, the fifth scenario we're looking at is how much affordable commercial space could we expect from such a project. And so we don't have the final numbers ready yet from the consultant, but we, we've at least gotten some initial feedback from them. And the initial feedback we've gotten is that um, the economics may support a community benefits program but with the current assumptions we have on, the pro on this particular analysis, the margins are pretty slim, even when we um, are only requiring one community benefit, like just affordable housing or just uh, the affordable space, uh, commercial space. Um, when in reality, you know, we'd like to do more than one, perhaps affordable housing and another benefit. Um, and so in terms of magnitude of what we're seeing in this analysis is we're seeing some additional on-site housing. Um, so one of the, the affordable housing scenario is looking at an additional 6% of on-site units after they meet their base requirements through the fee and lieu um, process. Um, using the LIHTC federal funding, um, we're seeing about 33% of the residential units on the site being affordable. And when we look at a project without affordable housing and just looking at affordable commercial space, what we're seeing right now is about 7% of the floor area being a deed restricted affordable commercial space, which in this case is about 10,000 square feet in this building. Um, and so again, we're, we're providing comments and we're, they're, gonna, they're gonna respond to those and we'll have a final report in the next couple of weeks that we'd love to share. Um, we are gonna expand that to be a much larger report once we're looking at the, men, the full menu of community benefits. And so there's a lot more analysis to do, but we wanted to at least start that conversation now. Um, this is really just the last slide, a little bit about engagement um, and next steps. Um, you know, we started with a lot of focus groups. We've had a lot of conversations and they've been pretty interesting. Um, many people um, really seem to agree that among all those different options for community benefits, affordable housing is really a top priority. Um, a lot of folks are looking at particularly the building height piece as a way to contribute to low and moderate income um, um, rentals um, and residences. Um, in, in the focus group sessions, there's also um, you know a wide variety of viewpoints, and thankfully, um, you know a lot. Some there was some consensus about kind of a balanced approach of of looking at incentives that are high enough and good enough to in, uh, incentivize development, but also keeping in mind the community's values and the context of that of that project around the neighborhood and so on. And to that end, um, you know context, context, context. The first um, comment we've received in our very first focus group was th um, less about the number of affordable units and more about how the project fits in the neighborhood. And so that's leading us, those that's kind of resurfaced through the project. And so we'll probably be looking at some kind of design standards and other things to, in, the, in the community dialogue. Uh, where we're heading, we're looking to have a larger event after the council study session. Uh, we're assembling some staff and community groups to uh, begin kind of brainstorming some different options, um, reconvening some of those focus groups and trying to um, really just get out into the community and keep the conversation going, ultimately um, wrapping up the project around the third quarter of, of next year. Um, and again, we'll be going to the planning board on August 16th with these and other materials. Um, and City Council on August 28th. And so with that said, um, the questions that we wanted to pose to have tonight was, if you have any questions that we can talk through, um, if you have any su suggestions, as we're thinking through kind of what a successful program might look like, 
we'd love, you know, in this very, very early stage of the planning process, we'd love to kind of engage you all and get your thoughts on that. Um, and, and, you know, and then how should we be engaging HAB as we move forward? Thank you for your time, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. So I think the first round is for questions. So if anybody has um, questions for them before we go into discussion. Mine are like a mixture. Of so, question and discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it, I mean, this is a great, great opportunity for process. But what I'm seeing is that we typically go into questions first directly for the board. And then once questions are through on that first round, then we can go into discussion piece on it. Okay. So does anybody have any questions for them? Go ahead, Judy. Okay. Good. Okay, <laughs> thank you. That was really interesting and I appreciate it. Um, my question is about context and you address that, Phil, is your name Phil? Yeah. Okay, you address that in the end when you were talking about neighborhoods and there's the context of community, ben there's the silo of community benefit that the city's very interested in and then there's also the silo of neighborhood and sub-community planning that the city's also very interested in. And I can see how, well, I guess I'll just ask the question. Can you talk a little bit more about that context, uh, the me that meshing? Yeah, I, I, that's a great point. I think they're all connected. Um, so the comp plan talks a bit about um, as we're moving into this new era of sub-community and area planning, there, there's going to be a kind of a direct linkage to community benefits with, with those processes. And so we would expect that future plans would um, identify, similar to the North Boulder sub-community plan, identify what community benefits would be most appropriate for that area. Um, and that would then inform either what's required, what we would, what we would ask at the time of application, um, alternatively, you know, we've also heard from other boards like the University Hill and others, as well as as well as residents, that um, not it's not a one size fits all sort of approach. And so, it, you know, there's a question out there of do we need to identify specific priorities in specific areas? And it, that would get kind of complicated. But it's been brought up, and I don't know if that answers your question, buddy. Yes, thank you. I did have one question. <laughs> Go ahead, Adam. Okay. Um, so during the presentation, you mentioned uh, the things that might actually set this off, like, you know, trigger a community benefit um, study. And you mentioned uh, density might be one of them, but without rezoning. You know, you said rezoning might be one. You said density might be one. I'm a little bit confused as to how density can be one without, you know, when it, within a zone that it's not allowed. That, that doesn't make much sense to me. Well, I, I think it would be a scenario where it would probably be a high density residential zone and it would be a scenario where um, there's a density maximum based on dwelling units per acre. Like, like we were talking about the BR1, for instance, I think it's 20, 23 dwelling units per acre is the max. Mm -hmm. It would just be like if you go above that, there's no zone that specifies a density higher than that anyway. So I think we would be in in a, com a community benefit review territory. Okay. I think the rezoning is more like if it's like a lower intensity zone and they're going to like a medium density or they're going from medium density to high end. So that, may, that makes a lot more sense. You're saying in the, our highest density zone, if we were to want to go above what, what the highest proposed density already is, then this would be a trigger for right, them. and there are specific specific scenarios in the zoning code in certain zones where you can ask for density bonuses. It's pretty pretty limited right now, but so one of the outcomes of this might be re, you know changing some of the zones where it would trigger community benefit under different scenarios in different zones. I, I mean, we're we're trying to go for simplicity here, but um, that could be an outcome. Yeah. Jack, um, any questions? Yeah. I suppose I'm going back to the context piece a little bit um, initially, and then also the flexibility of those contextual needs, let's say, that we see amongst community benefit. And I'm just curious, are there any of the other cities that you're studying that have a relative amount of flexibility in that process? 
I think quite a few uh, uh, offer flexibility um, through that through the negotiated process. Like I said, there's a there's a trade off there. Uh, I think some communities want that level of flexibility, and they have a a legal staff that assists in a lot of these negotiations with developers to try to determine how a community be benefit is commensurate with the bonus they're getting. The problem with that is that it's not as predictable. Um, one of the criticisms we're hearing in, in the communities when an application comes in, there, it's not very predictable what the outcome is gonna be and that our goal is to try to create that level of predictability. Um, there is one example of a case study we're looking at. I actually think it's, I think it's Palo Alto actually where they have a negotiated process and there's a lot of criticisms about that because it's uh, unpredictable. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm getting at from the kind of from the developer standpoint. It's like, oh my God, what am I stepping into here? Um, but on the other hand, we don't just want a bunch of basketball courts proliferating. But there's also <laughs> like some of the case studies we're looking at have a tiered process where mm -hmm. it's very strict at tier one and then it it's a little more prescribed at tier two and then if it's a community okay. benefit that's not well defined, then you're in tier three and that's negotiated. So it's kind Got of, it. there's an, yeah. an array. Okay, thanks. I did have, um, did have one question. You talked about the economic study and were you uh, going to look at the Pollard site? I know they did a economic study on the Pollard site, even though the city owns the land, but I'm sure you can adjust it. I was just wondering if you were going to learn from that. Jeff is on our team reviewing that, and so I may ask if Jeff can respond. So the, the uh, analysis is um, was done by the Kaiser Marston Associates firm, uh, built on the information in part that was um, generated for the yield study and the economic study at um, Pollard. But that it, it's substantively done already. And Thank you. It did incorporate information from that. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, so let's go on to um, discussion and the next question, which um, might be bored to have to contribute to a successful community benefit. So we can go into discussion in that. Go ahead, Judy. We can just go down the road. <laughs> Okay, um, I keep turning it off so people won't hear me eating in between. <laughs> okay, um, let me ask you this question, or you, are you looking for consensus right now of the board, or are you just asking to hear our individual opinions? Individual opinions, I think is fine. Okay, so obviously most of us are gonna have the individual opinion that um, the greatest community benefit is affordable housing, and we'd be just as happy if that was the vast majority. But beyond that, um, I'm interested in the context piece being a real part of the fabric of, of what you come up with. Um, it will save the developers time and heartache and money if they get a sense of what the neighborhood feels before they start. Um, it will save the neighborhood anxiety and aggravation, and it'll save the city time in having to referee between the two. So if you can build that in as a part of the plan of how this would proceed, you know, give suggestions to council on how it would best proceed, I think that would help you get the biggest bang for your buck. That's my opinion. Thank you. Cool. All right, I have three or four pieces, so prepare your writing tools. Um, okay, so first one, um, I really think the AMI must be specifically designated for any projects such as this. I'm gonna keep bringing this up every single time. Jeff, you're gonna get really tired of it. Um, <laughs> this is a big board discussion that we've been having. So um, our current system of approaching AMI, I don't feel is working for permanently affordable housing. So um, potentially going lower on the scale when we're talking about the units that are being built, I think is one thing we have to look into. Um, the menu of options uh, sort of idea, I love that, you know, you can pick and choose what you think might be best to some degree, um, but along with Judy, um, affordable housing, I think is obviously the number one issue in this community right now, very closely followed by affordable commercial space. And as much as I love the gazebos here in Boulder, um, 
I think those are really the only priorities that should be addressed until those problems are solved. Um, I think Boulder's already such a desirable place that it's not gonna matter how many more basketball courts, parks, art installations we put up. And while the, all those things are super important, that's not the problem we're facing right now. Um, I have a real preference of permanently affordable ownerships over rentals, simply because we're already running into problems with permanently affordable rentals um, and making sure they're permanently affordable. Um, the housing, actually allowing someone to buy the house, not only helps them a little more in the long term, keeping their own money, but also addresses the issue of dealing with people who can put a, a parking space for sale uh, in a permanently affordable unit at a higher rate than it should be, things along those lines. It just automatically keeps those off the table. Um, I think that might be it. Yep. Jeff? You can speak yourself. Yeah. Okay. I'll go to the end. <clears throat> um, I'm green, yeah. I think I'm going to kind of go a little bit modified on what Adam was just saying about the benefit package or the available options, so to speak. Um, I think I agree with him that we have some very focused things that we're trying to solve and housing being this board's mandate, I think is a big piece of it. So I gotta say, I think it might make sense to give a tiered system in a sense there also that we may have some core choices that are at the top of the menu, the main course, but then there's some appetizer dessert items that go with that maybe. Um, and the reason for me on that one is that we're not just trying to create housing units, but we are trying to create community. And so some of those people, pieces might bolster it and we can kind of put those together. But overall, I agree that there should be a kind of a core package, I would suggest. And then maybe we can uh, say, well, you're kind of there, but not quite. So how about you throw in that basketball court? <laughs> Is it gotta be basketball? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Crystal, do you want to add anything? You know, I'm going to get a shot at this at planning board, okay. so I want to listen to what you all have to say. So I'm really right along with what everybody's saying, and to me, my top priority would be housing. Um, so absolutely, but I understand where Jacques's coming from as well, is that I'd like to see a real strong emphasis on some community planning um, and focusing in on the smaller neighborhoods so that we can deal with some of the issues around uh, transportation, et cetera. So um, to me, always the top tier, affordable housing, sub-community, transportation. Um, I have a problem with the in-lieu fees um, for any of this. I'm not a fan of them, really, and I almost feel like they should be de-incentivized. So like, if you're gonna do that, I I'd like to see them a little bit more painful than if you were actually gonna install something. So to me, that's just how I kind of look at those. And then it must have been about six months or so ago, I can't remember, I was listening to a podcast about art installations, but how some of the cities across the country now are dealing with these kind of crises of keeping up art installations. I'm sure you probably heard it somewhere. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of fascinated by uh, who's gonna keep that up and um, how that would be managed if we go into any of these is who would be required to maintain them so that the city doesn't find themselves burdened with having to maintain a bunch of, you know, like we've had those pocket parks, you know, around the city that are nice, but I think they've also caused some issues for people maintaining them. Um, so yeah, that's all I have as far as the discussion goes on it. Anybody else want to add anything? Sorry, I remembered one. Yep. Um, one more thing on the menu of options. The one thing I do know is businesses are very good at finding what the cheapest option is. So making sure that the options are indeed compatible and interchangeable in a way. And quality. Yep, that's super important to me. Yes, Judy. Um, I'd just like to say since I spoke first that <laughs> this sounds like I want to associate myself with everything everybody else said too. I, I agree with the things I hadn't brought up. Great. 
So let's go over to how does the board prefer to be engaged throughout the progress of the project? So I guess that would be kind of our conversation. And um, if anybody has any ideas how you'd like to continue the engagement in this process? Adam? Primarily, I'd like to see what they come up with with the sort of answers to the things that we have posed, mm -hmm. um, our concerns, and I'd just like to see them addressed directly. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I just think that as the pieces specifically surrounding housing um, start coming together, obviously that we would be just engaged with those particular pieces most directly and can get feedback back to you guys on that. Judy? Maybe I should just leave it on and quit eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, to what everyone said, but I, I also think, uh, to be more specific, that it would be great if somewhere in this process towards the end, we had an avenue to give our feedback um, to, to council. Mm -hmm. So I'd actually like to even go one step further and um, potentially use our special committee on this. I'd like to make a motion that if somebody would want to participate um, <laughs> and be a direct liaison um, with it. So I... I feel like then that way we're also following the process. It's going to inform some of our affordability, um, and it doesn't fall through the cracks, and it's short-term in nature versus a long-term committee. So it'd be just something that could be updated and uh, having one person. Anybody else in favor of that idea? I think that's mm -hmm. a great idea. Mm -hmm. I think we should make the official vote at the next meeting so as not to put it, it on the agenda right now. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to make a motion to table it. Mason, I have a um, question of the staff. Does th does this process have a process subcommittee, like some of the other processes where you've had people from count, couple people from council, couple people from planning board, et cetera? That could come out of the discussion at planning board and council. Um, you know, I think it worked well in those, like the comp plan, for example. Um, we have our internal processes of executive sponsors and things like that, but but nothing like you've described. Yeah. Anybody else? So I think then what the motion is, is to table it, correct? Um, so we, I'd make a motion to table it until August 22nd uh, for a vote on um, a special committee, of, on a vote of whether or not we want to form a special committee. Can anybody be on Second. it? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. So unanimous vote, and we'll table it until August 22nd. For a vote. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, and Thank you. Thank you. And the plan was to kind of come back on a periodic basis yeah, and great. keep you all informed and engaged. So, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so great. We're ahead of the schedule a little bit. And next we have matters from the board. First matter would be invoking Robert's rules um, just to make it a formal process. We're going to do a motion to move towards Robert's rules. Does anybody want to have any discussion around it before we vote on it? I just wanted to mention something. I looked at the bylaws, mm -hmm. and it can be done two ways, mm -hmm. and it can be done by the board chair invoking it, or it can be by majority vote, mm -hmm. and um, we can also suspend it at some future time mm -hmm. if we want. So I will then go ahead and move that we proceed, which we're pretty close to doing anyway right mm -hmm. now, that we proceed with... Robert's Rules of Order. Okay. Anybody else have discussion? No, yeah. I do have one, um, one small thing. Um, if you go with it, and that's fine, most boards do, um, you might want to get some training. And I was thinking uh, years ago, Dickie L Lee Hollinghorse, she's such an expert on uh, Robert's Rules and procedures. And I know she's retired, but mm -hmm. there might be Bring somebody else that could do it. But if you were interested, and if other city boards might be interested, maybe the city could set up a more detailed um, uh, study session type of format. Yeah. Thank you. Great idea. Thank you. Do we need a second? 
Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm oh. not at the motion yet. I was just going to say is that I um, personally I love. I've done a lot of research over the last week on this, and that I really like the idea of the framework of Robert's rules. And I do like. A, I think it's great for us to start out and have something really nice and solid to kind of lean into to get our feet under us, and then maybe relax a little bit as we move move forward. So. Um, I'm totally in favor of this and something we can revisit as we move forward as we get more familiar with it. I also agree with you um, regarding more training on it. It's something Jeff and I were talking about, about how um, the board was initially set up and definitely um, this process for those of us who had never done it before would have been fantastic. So it's something that we're all learning and it's great. Um, and uh, I also think that in uh, if we vote to have the facilitator for August 8th, its process is something that we can also ask about if it's something we feel like we really want a little bit more formal training on it as well. So then we want to do a formal motion of, um, if there's nothing else, we can do a formal motion of invoking Robert's rules. So I move, so moved. So moved. <laughs> All in favor? We have second, I think, don't we? Yeah, you second, didn't you? I can't second myself. I don't think. Oh. She made the motion. Oh, oh you made the yeah. motion? Oh, okay, second. Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And it's unanimous. Okay, so let's go. Recap that real quick. Uh, how, how should I say it? So it's a unanimous for invoking Robert's rules. You made the motion. She made the second. Okay, I made the motion. Okay. <laughs> I just want to get the language down right. So I made, I made the motion and Judy seconded it, and we are unanimous for Robert's rules. Fantastic. So on to committee reports. Um, so we have two uh, different ones with standing and special. And just for a little bit of definition, standing would be permanent in nature, which we have already agreed to an engagement committee and a regional housing committee. So we're, um, we've got a couple under both of those. And then we have um, special, which is short term in nature. And we don't have anybody assigned to that yet. So we'll start out with engagement committee. If you, um, you have a letter to the camera that we had pushed off from the last meeting to this one. So there's a couple things. I'll, I'll start, I'll leave that for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll start. Um, <clears throat> I had um, interacted with Zach, who's the communications person for us with the city, um, to ask how the city could help us with things like next door or whatever for the project on August 22nd. And he said there's many things he can do, but um, in order for him to do it, we have to know what the goal is. So um, he, he needs to have the goal stated. So what we're wanting to do is have the public comment on August 22nd about um, their housing issue and their, con and their solutions for fixing it. Hopefully one, one issue, one solution. Um, and what we then want to do with it. And he said it could be as simple as saying um, that what we want to do with it is use it as, let me see what I have here. It could be to use the public input to identify trends in housing that the board might address at a, at a meeting or consider for the work plan. So he just wants us to have a goal that he can state in it. Um, and so I'd like people, the first thing I'd like is people to discuss a different goal or say that goal's fine, um, or talk about what our goal is in doing that meeting. Can you repeat what he stated again? Yeah, and this was what he suggested. It could be to use the public input to identify trends in housing that the board might address at a meeting or consider for the work plan. I think trends or needs, and or needs. Anybody want to just I'm fine. discuss that? I was, um, I was just thinking as I heard that trends. I don't know that so much trends we're looking for, but it's we're looking for solutions. Is I mean it, that's part of what we're trying to dig up from this, right? We're trying to actually get people to start coming to us with their concepts. As I was saying, yes, you know, the, the other day. So if somehow we can get that language in there, so that we're specific about what we're actually you know, asking for, that would be great. I would agree, Down that um, you just kind of brought that up. I think originally what we were looking for was that um, it's great to hear what the issues are that are coming up, but what we're trying to solve for is uh, unique and interesting ideas and give a platform for people to come forward with 
um, potential solutions more than just us sitting up here trying to think of all the solutions. So I'm happy to frame it anyway, and those are all great. So right now I just have to use public input to identify issues and solutions in housing that the board might address. We can just leave it there. I guess we don't have to go on beyond that, that the board might address. But we can say creative solutions, or, I mean, we can have it be whatever you want. I'm concerned about the word address because I don't think that we would be able to address everybody's concerns. And I don't, if we're managing expectations, I don't want people to expect that we'd be able to solve the housing. So might explore or might consider? I like explore. Okay, one for explore. I'll go with explore. Can you say it again, huh? To use the public input, input to identify issues and solutions in housing that the board might explore. I'm, I'm for explore. Okay. And can I interrupt the process just a little bit? This is a fantastic example of why if we can put these motions on the agenda beforehand and right. that goes out, we can consider it and anybody could make modifications and then mm -hmm. we're sol more solid in this process. So this is a fantastic example of, of that. Yes, and it might that might not always work, of course, because some things might come up too late, but right. sure, that's a good goal. Um, then, the other things for publicity that we had talked about doing, I'd like to get, do we need to vote on the first Yes, one? I was okay. just gonna say, it. why don't we put this in a motion, okay. have it seconded and voted Okay, vote. I move that we add the wording uh, for why we're doing this, that our goal is to use the public input, input to identify issues and solutions in housing that the board might explore. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we have a motion from Judy, seconded by Adam, to use the language as our goal statement for August 22nd. Cool. So then the next thing is we have to vote on the other ideas for publicity that Adam and I have in mind doing it, besides the letter to the editor and besides what Zach can do. I guess I should first ask, are you okay then in that vote that whatever Zach and Adam and I decide for next door and for whatever else he, the city can do, you're good with because we're, we only have one month now and that you'll trust us that the wording will be. For clarity purposes, you're talking about um, uh, any promoting that you would do using that as right. the goal. Got it. Right. Um, yes, I'm okay with that. What The only modification or amendment I'd like to ask for it is that it comes from the engagement group the engagement committee with mm -hmm. the Boulder Housing Advisory Board. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not from the whole board. Right. Mm -hmm. us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that cool with everyone? Uh, you got to make a vote. Yeah. So we have a motion to um, on the table to allow uh, any promoting from this goal statement to happen with an amendment that we have to vote on first that it comes from the Housing Advisory Board Engagement Committee. So first on the amendment then, um, all in favor of promotions coming from the Housing Advisory Board Engagement Committee. Aye. Second. Yeah. Unanimous. Mm -hmm. And then the motion, go ahead. So um, I'm not entirely clear on what coming from the engagement committee means. Um, many of the vehicles the city might use to publicize this would be standing city um, means of communication and promoting that aren't controlled by or really from the engagement committee. So um, as I was thinking, I th let me suggest, <coughs> excuse me, what I think you're doing is um, empowering, trying to empower the engagement committee to come up with a, a um, notice and promotion plan for your desired outcome of community engagement on the 22nd, and you're voting to authorize them to develop and implement that. Yes, and I think I, I would add that when the letter goes to the daily camera, it comes from the engagement committee um, versus just a whole list of our names. Adam? So also, this just establishes if anyone wants to look back and they don't like something that we wrote, 
these two are not responsible for whatever we wrote, and we're just establishing that here Fine. amongst the public. Thanks for the clarification. So, okay, you're gonna write, just a clarification, mm -hmm. you're gonna write a letter to the Daily Camera then a letter to the editor, and, and the board isn't going to review it, or you're not going to send no, it. We've now crossed over into a confusing area. I was talking just about what Zach does right then. Okay. So the letter to the editor is a separate issue. And if you want what Zach puts out to say the engagement committee, we will do that unless he can't. I don't want to have to go through another vote unless, as you said, it's just the Housing Advisory Board and then you'll, you would just have to trust Adam and I that we wouldn't say anything wild. <laughs> okay, so I think there's three parts to that. Um, what I'm hearing is anything that comes from Zach, I think should come from Zach and the city uh, because it'll come under their banner um, at the next door, on next door and stuff from what I've seen on social media. And then the second piece is, I do want to see the letters before they go out. I just think they should come from the engagement committee as you write them. So like that letter Ignite that you had us review, um, you know, the one you sent to us mm -hmm. for that? Okay, so then we need, I think, we need to opt out of the last motion we just passed because this is just for Zach and you now are saying you think it should come from Zach and the city. And that's all I was asking in the motion. See what I'm saying? So that. So the, uh, I believe the motion that we passed, because we didn't get to the second one yet, was just for Zach and the goal. Correct? To allow promoting from your goal statement with an amendment that comes from your engagement committee. <clears throat> so to use the goal language, agreed to use public input to identify issues and solutions in housing that the board might explore. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that one was from Zach, correct? Yeah, but we now have it yes. say from the public, we now have it say from the engagement committee is what we just voted on. We added Did, that. Was that included in the, in, in, on that? Right, right. There's no I engagement it, committee. I didn't think it said it either. There. Okay, so good. So, so then, um, so then the second thing is the other types of publicity that Adam and I talked about that we would like us to just be able to do is using the template from whatever we decide for the letter to the editor, we go ahead and do things like find all the groups we can possibly think of in Boulder and email them, email all the people who have emailed us about housing issues so that they know about it, and um, that's all, email those both those groups for publicity. So to be clear, then we're talking about the engagement committee taking that letter you drafted and reaching out to everybody you can find with it. Not taking exactly that letter, but okay. taking similar. Yeah. quite yeah. similar, and that you'll just go, okay, fine, yep. we trust you. Nothing that. that's not in the letter would be in the language. Great, yeah. I'm okay with that. Um, so then go ahead and make a motion and we can. Okay, I move that the board votes to let the engagement committee do the publicity of emailing groups and emailing people who've already contacted, emailed us, um, um, using the letter to the editor as a template. For the August 22nd event. Mm -hmm. Does that feel clear enough mm -hmm. for everybody? Mm -hmm. Seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, now the third thing is a letter to the editor, and I don't know exactly how it got on our list because the last time we did a letter to the editor, which everyone was happy about, we put it out, and then we asked people to respond if they had any changes they wanted to, and then they didn't, and then we just sent the letter out. Now, I have had one suggestion for change from you, Jacques, which was a really good one, and there's one thing I want to change, uh, add to it, um, but, and I'm happy to read the whole letter again, um, but those were the only two comments on it. So I'm not sure if every time we want to do a letter to the editor, we have to go through this complicated a process, but if it is, it is. So I'm going to ask you to clarify what is it that you're asking. Um, do you need, do you need Claire, do you want, are you asking for permission to not have to do this? Do you want to make a motion? 
Mm, I just want to have a discussion on if people feel it's necessary every time. If people feel it is necessary, we can read the whole thing and talk about it. If not, I can talk about the wordsmithing that Jacques suggested and the thing I wanted to add. Either way, I'm fine. Jacques? I just want to ask Crystal. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm just curious, other boards deal with this type of thing? What have you seen? How do you guys do it on planning? Well, if you run into this. We use, I mean, we've always use the city, it's a little bit different, but we've always used the city um, processes. And it's usually, I mean, the city uh, public engagement team that are part department and part from the manager's office. But on special projects, it'll be handled like the comp plan. It's such a huge project. So the staff had a whole component. So the board doesn't participate by sending out our own notices just because we're part of the lo lo larger process already and they handle all that. And just for clarification, Zach is fine about letters to the editor, but the city doesn't do that. We do that ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think our engagement piece is different than the other existing boards yep. that are out there. So I definitely see where our mm -hmm. two lines are on this. Do you want me to read the, would it help if I just read the letter and then said what Jacques' interest was? And uh, not f for me, I've, I've read the letter and it, uh, I think you did a great job, it's fine for me. I'm more um, interested in the set, how we're gonna set the standard. Um, what's the precedence, yeah. Adam? So well, just real quick, what I think we're doing right now is, um, you know, we normally send it out to everyone, everyone gives their edits, and I think we should just discuss any edits here, that's it approve or not approve those edits, and then that's the final step in the process. Okay, so uh, do you want to make a motion then for this letter and um, not for it happening all the time, or do you want to separate those two out and do you remember what Judy was saying? I would, I would say for this and all letters that we send it out on the HAB email, people have uh, an opportunity to edit and then we will take those edits, because there may be other times before this, besides this, that we do publicity. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so should I go to, do we need that to vote on that? That will be the whole or? process then that we're yeah. making a motion on, yes. including this right. letter. Yes. Um, you know, I do think you have to be a little bit careful with the open meeting issue about the edits, and I think of it in context of um, the planning board, the annual letters to city council, we're very careful. We'll all send it to uh, Corey, who will then give it to the committee to work with or have one person compile it all. So it doesn't go back. So there's not a discussion going back and forth that says, I like this edit, but I don't like that and that's edit. What we've I know it's a little bit cumbersome. No, no, we've done that. We've said, when I've sent both letters out, that the one we've already done and this one, I have said, don't email me, I saw send that. it to court. Thank and that's good. I think that's good practice. Um, I think I would suggest just one little addition to this is that we give ourselves a time frame for the letter being presented. So through Corey, whoever drafts the letter initially, it goes to Corey. There's a time frame that we need to have X days to review the letter and, and give our edits back to Corey so that we just know what that is. So we avoid the thing of a letter coming out last minute Great. And, and not really having that. So I would just suggest something that says that any letters from the engagement committee that will go out to the public be um, offered for editing to all board members through Corey within 72 hours of the next meeting. And at that meeting, we vote on releasing that letter. Or do we not want to go the to that? The reason why I'd rather not do it that way is I'd rather do it the way we did it the first letter is because we might need to get something out really fast. And if we have to wait till the next meeting, um, yeah, so this, we gave the yeah, letter out a good three, four weeks beforehand. And, and just to elaborate a little, um, as I remember it, your ag agreement on the last letter was that if the edits that staff received were contradictory or hard to reconcile, if they weren't just copy edits, 
um, that we would respond by saying this is a matter you'll have to take up in public meeting. And so and that's my, the common understanding. That's um, Yep. And yeah. my only other um, issue that I'm not sure how we could address is uh, if somebody's unavailable or if, you know, if we're going to say 72 hours and somebody went into the mountains, which I'm known to do for, you know, a couple of days without um, checking anything, is how do we make sure, uh, you know, you always ask us for, um, yeah, just some type of a confirmation that it was received, you know, just saying got it or good or whatever, something along those lines. So. Maybe if we pinky swear, is that something that Robert's Rules has as a pinky swear? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it doesn't have to go to Corey. It could go to Judy. Mm -hmm. The point is oh. how you operated last time with making sure that there wasn't this conversation right. going on. But one, one planning board has handled it, or Cindy, the administrative uh, liaison, has handled it. But she doesn't. She hasn't done the edited edits. She just collected them for us. So I think we've got a good round discussion on there. Do we feel like we're ready to move towards a motion on it? Just need to establish that time frame still. Well, and this gets back to your piece. I think, you know, for me, it seems like 72 hours is probably a reasonable. You're going before the meeting, before the next meeting. Right. Yeah. Um, I, well, I want to I want to pull back on that a little bit with how that time frame works. Um, I suppose before the release, then because if we're not going to bring them all to the meetings, and I kind of like what Jeff was just saying, it's like if we can leave this in staff's hands a little bit. If he sees, you know, or if staff is seeing something, which is one reason why maybe Corey is a better space for this to go to. If if staff is then seeing something that they're like, oh wait a minute, we got heads budding a little bit here and this has to go to public meeting, then they can make that call for us. Um, so would so. you be comfortable, and that's good, and to give enough time on the end for us to do the publicity that, in a timely manner, if we just say something like, rather than having to do with before a meeting, just say something yep. like, um, once it's put out by Corey, yep. um, Three days, five days, yeah, I don't much right, care. Prior to the release. Yep. And um, bigger picture on this as well is ultimately the goal will be for all of us to move to n nothing happening once the agenda's out. So one week before our meetings, when it gets published, we've tabled our discussions till we get here so that staff has plenty of time, our agenda's accurate. So that's a bigger picture item, but just so that we're aware of that. But I agree with you on... Uh, to move quicker, 72 hours goes to Corey. Um, any butting of the head, then it's that's our rip cord. It gets paused until a vote. And of course, that doesn't mean that Adam and I will send it to the paper or to the whatever. Right then, we may have a different timing that we want to do, but then we'll have it approved. And maybe what you do in the letter is write the details at the bottom. Plan on submitting at this time. Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. Let let us know the deadlines too. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So go ahead and make who, a motion. Who wants to try to craft that? Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> who gets to craft, craft that, that one? Motion? Let's see. I move that all letters to the editor and similar types of publicity that need board approval be sent to Corey. As soon as she puts it out, the board will have 72 hours to respond. Corey will send it to us, to me and Adam, and is that all I need to say? <laughs> Was that enough? Unless, uh, unless staff. substantive edits okay. need to be made okay. by staff, uh, by staff's recommendation. Right. Okay, perfect. Is that okay? Did you get something like that, Corey? All right, so Judy made a motion. Anybody to second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now. So that's a really lengthy one. Otherwise, I would say yeah. Judy made a motion and Adam seconded it, and we all said okay. <laughs> so we have a couple, there were a couple of changes. The first we can't do till we do the agenda review, so I'd like to put it off, and that's the time. Because if we decide to have the 
Um, we're having the public participation. Uh, that's not what I mean. We talk about when to tell people to come so we wouldn't have them sitting around doing whatever. But if we're changing the way we do presentations, that changes the time the meeting would start. So I don't want to put out 7.30 as we had agreed to if indeed we'll be done with the presentation that we're having before or whatever. Okay, so I move to table that until we do the agenda okay. review at the end. Great. Great. I second that. Does that make sense, Corey? Good. So later in the agenda under um, E, under agenda review, um, we have number, we're going to discuss um, 822, and we'll work out the details then of timing for that agenda. So we're just tabling it till later in this meeting. The second part that I wanted to put in, and then I'll get to what Jacques um, recommended, is I forgot to say anything in this letter about you can watch the meeting live on Channel 8, and I think right. that's a really good, or archived, and I think that's a really good thing to put in the paper. Agreed. Right. Totally. So, Jacques, do you want to say what you're... You know, doing? you're going to have to refresh to me. refresh me? Okay. <laughs> There's a lot's happened between then and now. Okay. So, Jacques suggested that we also put something in there, um, and we can craft that line together if you want, but something in there that... Uh, he felt that if people get up and speak, that would be fabulous, but we want they might have more meaty information or we might not be able to get everything we can and we'd like to request that if they can, they also put it in writing and email it to us. And I thought that was a good idea. Yeah. I Kind of the, the, the teacher in me almost wants to say that if you're doing the presentation, it has to be something that's substantive enough. I'm trying to parse the presentations a little bit. And I know we're public engagement, we want that input, but we also want it to be substantive. So in doing that, I was trying to think, okay, can we actually encourage those who have a significant idea about how to solve some of our problems? Because I am concerned about it will be more issues than solutions. Um, and so I don't know, but I was trying to get some way to say, how can we suggest that we're really looking for for the solutions piece. So uh, I'm going to piggyback on that and just say that in the writing of this, it really needs to stress in all of our writings that um, uh, we're piloting, so using piloting um, and encouraging solution-oriented speeches or um, uh, participation so that it, it dis encourages or uh, limits just the, or one for one or one for two um, for every issue come with a sol one or two solutions. Maybe that's what we call so it. Instead of ignite, it's um, maybe it's a, um, a twofer. Uh, <laughs> you know, something fun, something that's catchy. You're the marketing guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, like some kind of catchy name that's a, you know, a twofer or one, one, two punch or something like that. Give us a one, two punch and, you know, hit us with the, the two goods to the one. So I think that's a really good idea. That particular thing might be best for another time because we're very word limited in the word count is like strictly limited. And I was thinking that for Jacques' piece, we could just say, We'd love to have you email us your extended solutions, something like yeah. that. Um, how does that sound? To everybody? Your detailed. Your Further detailed. elaboration on your idea, anything like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, extended feels long to me okay. versus <laughs> detailed and poignant. You're poignant. <laughs> You're concise. Wordsmither. <laughs> okay, so how do you want to be? I'm happy with anything. Um, We'd love to. Even just full solution or... Um, Thoughtfully crafted solution. Well, I don't. I don't want to make people feel that ooh, mine's not thoughtfully crafted. <laughs> you know, just how about your detail, your more detailed solutions? Would that work, or is that? Are you afraid that'll get too long? How about? I think that's fun. I mean, I think just to get that sense across okay. that we're looking for detailed, that we're solution oriented. Okay. We could use what City Council said the other night, and you're apparently well thought out. <laughs> 
to your parents. Parent well. Get your parent the word apparent. <laughs> Let's go with detailed solution. Detailed solution. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then yes. my last question is: You had just said you would rather the letter be from Adam and just me. Have yeah. engagement. Okay. Have engagement. I think that is a good way to present these. This Plus, I, the, from the HAB engagement committee. Well, yeah. that saves us 10 words, so thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I also think that in the future, if the committee members change or anything like that, it's still the, the context of the committee is the same, and people know what to look for versus an individual person's name. It does save us words. Okay. <laughs> Great. Save words. So, thank you. Uh, do we need any other motion in that? We need a motion just to approve, approve the amended changes. To yes. Okay, uh, I make a motion to approve the amended changes to our for our letter to the editor uh, for the August 22nd event. A second. All right. All in favor? All right. So Adam made a motion for the letter to the editor for, for August 22nd. I seconded it, and all, all unanimous. Great. So anything else from engagement? No new business. No new business. Great. Uh, Regional Housing Committee. Um, we need to appoint a second representative on that. Would anybody like to volunteer as a second representative? And just to be clear, the the um, current representative is well, Jack. Yeah. Jack I, I'm, and the, I'm the remaining current right. representative. Yes. Leonard was yes. our second. second representative on that. And so, yes, we need a second. I would like to volunteer for that. Anybody else? Anybody want to arm wrestle Mason? <laughs> <laughs> um, so do we have to vote on that then, yes, to, for I don't committee members? Because I think we, we just committee? assigned them. Yeah. We, yeah. I, yeah. If there were any, um, it would be clearer if you voted, but I don't think it's necessary. There's only one person who's interested. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, so just to be clear, then there, the two people that will be um, representatives for the Regional Housing Committee will be Jacques and Mason. And just, just for further clarification, there's no discussion, there's no dissent, none of that. True. We're all good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did want to, if I may, just do a Add quick kind of update on the committee. Okay. That is now no longer committee one. Um, but I've just, I have had more discussion with um, Kristen Heiser and um, I haven't told you yet, but we are having a meeting on... Actually, she told me. She did. She got to you already. Well, I was at the, the meeting, city council. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, a meeting on the 16th with Kristen, okay. so we can go over that and uh, and take a look at what's going on there. So we're just looking into their proposal at this point. I need to lean in. And, uh, and we'll have a meeting on the 16th with Kristen to get a kind of update on how that was formed, how they came to the 12% number. Um, and then kind of see where where HAB can fit in and help out. Great. And so to piggyback on that, then um, in our next meeting on August 22nd, which we'll talk about agenda-wise, is um, adding it to an update on that date. Mm -hmm. um, at, at the moment, it's currently scheduled for your September meet, fourth Wednesday in September meeting. Uh, under our normal agenda items, we will always have a a committee update here, but you're talking about... The, the consideration of a recommendation. Recommendation, goal. right, yes. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Which we'll have to put on our work plan, which we'll be talking about, which I think you already did, correct? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we don't have anything under special short term, and we can move into unfinished business. Do we want to take a break now, or do we want to keep going? I'll move for a short recess. Okay. Um, so five minutes, and we'll be back at 730. We need a second and a vote. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so five minutes, we'll be back at 7.30. Let's see why we have these breaks.
Oh, Jacques. You called me. Jacques. Did you? Oh, I don't know my name, but. What is that guy's name again? Um, which one, Joel? Yeah. Okay, so. Um, and I want to apologize, but I've been totally overwhelmed with life. Um, for not being a better contact with you. But um, Joel is currently working on finishing some jobs up. And I know that he is maxed right now. But I think that might release here. And I'm going to talk to him tomorrow. I'll see him tomorrow. So I'm going to talk to him tomorrow about trying to get over there and get that door done. Um, and I'm going to say what we're going to do is, are you... It's like a fucking door. I know. Friday? I saw you. Yeah. From Friday? Misnamed it. Yeah. Insult to me. So is Friday a good day? Over there? Morning or afternoon? I think. Let's see. We can think of my schedule a little bit. We could do afternoon on Friday. That would lose those buildings that have to disappear. I'll be best. I'll just tell them. Yeah, I mean, it's I didn't even know what I ordered. Five years old. I love that she's like, it makes me kind of laugh every time. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to name for a couple of just you. Oh, one o'clock on Friday. And was it J O E L? J O E L. Yeah, it's yeah. just such a weird name. Yeah. He's, he's, he's Swiss too. He is Swiss also. Yeah. I love Swiss. His last name is Bud, B A U D. Oh, okay. And he comes from the canton of Bud. He's Joel Bud. That's where he got It's pretty awesome. It's from that canton. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put that in my calendar. But now Let me see if I have him in my calendar. Actually, would you email me, Lynn? Yeah. Shoot me an email or a text with that. Oh, look at B A U D. He's in there.
My mom just seven thirty. Was Corey ready for us? Yeah. Corey, are you ready? How old you doing? Ninety nine. I'll show you a picture. Wait. Okay, so we're moving on to unfinished business. And the first two pieces that we have are um, clarifications from and follow up from staff. So um, this first item is around the question of the wording of the feedback um, from the Housing Advisory Board on the issue of rent increases that was contained in the June 28th information packet item to City Council. And um, at your last meeting, there I believe was clear um, agreement uh, by board members that there was no formal recommendation to council on the items that were mentioned in that um, information packet. And there was a request to look into the possibility of issuing a clarification or a correction. Um, um, and what we did uh, look into that, um, it was not something that was w widely um, understood as a standard procedure by uh, any of the staff we talked to. The one suggestion we had was that we could, if it were deemed important, um, put out an email to the hotline uh, with a clarification. And prior to doing that, um, there was uh, considerable interest in checking in to see um, to what extent you as a board feel that's necessary. Or, um, and I think I outlined some of the considerations that, uh, in an email to Judy that um, she had asked where we were on this, if I remember right. Uh, I don't know if you want to speak to the, any of that or if you want me to just... Um, Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, some of the points that we had some question about was whether or not there was some sufficient difference between what was actually said in that information packet item uh, and what is uh, currently happening or is likely to happen. It, are, those, are the differences significant enough to try and issue a correction? If so, um, what, what is the desired outcome of that? Uh, what would your, your, as a board, what would you hope to accomplish by sending a correction? And then thirdly, um, is this, in essence, where you want to use some of your bandwidth uh, to counsel, similar to letters to the editor, there's only so many. Um, there's only, uh, the more you uh, communicate um, on the, the less you communicate, probably the more attention your communications will get. Uh, hotline is a public, um, publicly is a published email also. So those are the considerations. Um, you know, we can draft an email that would go out to the public at large and as well on the hotline um, and, uh, or to those who subscribe to that, that would state something. We'd need you to decide on the words that you would want to use and because um, that's not something we would want to craft. Judy. I just wanted to ask Jacques, um, since you weren't there when we had the discussion, are you clear on what we're talking about? I was just going to ask. I'm not even clear. No, me either. <laughs> I'm not even clear on what it is. So I'm like, no, let me back I was up then. Say, um, I have no I'm idea what this is about. <laughs> on the 20, and you're meeting on the 27th, yes. uh, and unfortunately I wasn't there, so I'm, I'm going off of what um, others have told me, including Judy in particular. Um, there were, was a discussion of rent increases and the mechanism that's applied to allow for ma a certain level of rent increase, and there was significant concern. I think that's shown by some of the other is issues on your agenda tonight uh, that you want to um, consider for uh, potentially for changes or, or at least understanding that issue. Um, the information packet is a communication, a memo that goes to council in it was uh, one that was scheduled to go around the issue of rent increases based on the concern in the community about it. Uh, between the, your meeting on the 27th and the time it went in the next day, staff summarized your feedback in the following way. Uh, it was titled, Input from the Housing Advisory Board. And then this is a quote from that memo. The Housing Advisory Board discussed this issue on June 27th and made the following recommendations. Add this issue to the Division of Housing Work Plan. Second, evaluate different approaches for adjusting rents that may be more closely aligned with changes in incomes of the residents that live in affordable rental housing. 
Third, explore any legal constraints or options. And then fourth, uh, consider extending the notice period of 30 days, which is the current minimum notice period for residents when a property owner changes rents. So that's the extent of what we reported to council as, um, as input from you as a board. And there's concern that it was not entirely accurate because of the implication that you made a formal recommendation to do these things when there was no such formal recommendation is my understanding of the concern. Got it. I'd like to add, then at the next meeting when Jeff was there, mm -hmm. um, he, he didn't realize that we hadn't really made that recommendation and, and we talked about how to correct that and we talked about making clear that it's important, but we didn't vote on it, that staff not forward information that we say, unless it's checked with us to make sure we actually really said it. And so because we didn't make the recommendation, we're, we're now trying to figure out should anything be done. My personal opinion is I don't care so much about this particular thing because we'll be discussing it again and making our recommendations as I do, I, I don't, I don't want our decisions to be misconstrued again, so I want us to sign off on them first before information is forwarded to council. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, it's just a matter of actually making a formal recommendation mm -hmm. before anything is actually submitted to council on this particular issue. I don't disagree with anything that was done, and I think we can further elaborate on it, so I don't think it's useful to make a correction in this instance. Um, I'm open to other opinion. Jeff? I don't, from what I've just heard, and not having been at that last meeting, but I don't see any need to to do a clarification on it. Um, as you said, it's kind of still an open thing that we're working on, and I, I think it's fine. Yeah, and I, I would add that I see it as two parts. One is there any form of a retraction or do we want to do anything with it? And my personal opinion is no, it went now. It, it's already out there. It's to me spilled milk, so I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, and I don't disagree with anything that was said. Um, and the other part of it is process. So part of what we are working on is process, which um, and Jeff and I were talking about that too within our work plan and something that we can use with the facilitator is really talking about um, when do we want to make recommendations? Is it going to be a monthly thing, a quarterly thing, a by issue thing? Do we just want to summarize at the end of the year? So we'll be talking about all those processes. So um, in this instance, I'm fine with it and I have no feeling for that, but it's great information to file away so that we can have that discussion on process. Yes, and I'm fine with that decision. I just want to again be clear and be on the record that we didn't make the recommendation and that there were three or four items that we also did discuss that didn't get on there that are still, I'm guessing, important um, to us. Yes, of which I will get to in the next piece. So, um, I, uh, yes, Jeff. Um, and uh, two things. One is, fortunately, that was a, a meeting that was recorded uh, in chambers, so anyone that is interested can see exactly what was said and um, what wasn't said, as the case may be. Um, I would like to ask for a little clarification around uh, turnaround times. I think it is a good practice for us to check what our summary of, of your um, feedback might be if it's not in the, it wasn't made in the form of a formal rec uh, motion and recommendation that was adopted, that's easy. We're just taking the exact thing you voted on. In this case, it wasn't. It was a summary of a discussion. Um, and I agree that running that by you makes sense. In this case, there was less than, a, I don't know if it was 12 or 14 or 16 hour turnaround. Um, in that circumstance, would a, a quick email with we don't know if people will get it or get a reply. Is it better to not submit anything without getting the opportunity to check in with you? Do we want a minimum amount of time? Yeah. It's or is it okay if, you know, at 10 the following morning you get an email that, that on something is, has to be submitted by noon? So I need clarity on this. Is this something they've asked for, councils asked for, and uh, wanted a summary, and that's why you wrote it? Or do you do this on a regular basis, and that's why we were? So issues that fall, that are going to council, that fall under the mandate of a particular board or commission, 
are typically taken to that um, Board of Commission for input and um, a variety of things can happen there. There can be a formal recommendation uh, that comes from the board uh, to the council, and in some cases, like Crystal's certainly aware with on planning board, you're required to do that. You, this board does not have such a requirement, so you are never required to make a recommendation. For example, at this point with four members, if you have a 2-2 two -two, uh, split on something, there can't be a formal recommendation. So in those cases like that, uh, we would summarize the discussion, highlight the main issues, and provide it to council so that they have the benefit of your discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and there was there are times when there's a very quick turnaround required, and so we have to figure out what you all are comfortable with, whether it's better to, to um, I think if there's time, it's always better to check in and get the chance for people to say no uh, or yes. Um, if there isn't time um, and only a couple people get a chance to look at it, are you comfortable with that or would you rather have a minimum amount of turnaround and otherwise have there was insufficient time to summarize the, um, the Housing Advisory Board's discussion on this? So one more quick question for clarity then on that is um, these things that we're discussing about needing a recommendation on would be on our work plan or it would be something that we would have an agenda on so we would know that we're preparing a recommendation or that one was needed, correct? Correct. So it shouldn't be su a surprise to us. And, and I think I must have missed that last yeah. one of why um, at that point. So I think once we nail down the process of the work plan to the agenda, um, we'll be clear that we're in that motion of giving a recommendation if we don't come to one that we you would be surmising our discussion on it and then um, yes I don't personally I'll tack on to that and say that I, I would not want to see uh, anything put out that I didn't get a glance at beforehand so I I understand your need for a quick turnaround anybody else want to add I, I, I would just suggest that when we're at the meeting that will be the topic of the summary that you're going to send on the council that we just have that momentary discussion if we know it's a really quick turnaround we can kind of be given the heads up that that's going to happen and we need to be able to, you know need to respond but i, th I think that would you know kind of i think that's an excellent idea and mm -hmm. barring that if that doesn't work for some reason i think the opportunity for some input is better than none so if you send it out to all of us and you only have we only have two hours to respond at least that gives us the option. Adam? Uh, I'm fine with it. The only issue I saw here is the word recommendation should not be in a summary at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So to oh, go ahead. Just Jeff. one more quick thing, although I think I may have just lost it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, forget it. I lost it. Okay. So I think what we're ultimately saying. Could I just ask, Crystal, with your experience, of, is there anything that we're landing on that you think could be improved? Uh, no, I mean, there's always the quandary of a discussion where there is no recommendation, and that often happens in a concept plan. And, um, and so we do rely on Cindy to capture that discussion because it goes to city council and it's often a fairly quick turnaround there's some things that we've asked to see our discussion before it goes to council and before our minutes are approved so Corey, can we make the recommendation that you capture us and look really smart while you do it and that everything sounds really good but jeff is right our recommendations <laughs> are usually formal like an annexation yeah. It's just a recommendation right. to council, but they're more formal. Yeah. I yeah. mean, where you can have a motion, then it's pretty darn clear. Which we, when we were looking at the work plan, there are spots which we already know that need to have our recommendations. So we already know what would be formulating in there. One other piece. Um, can we just say that if staff gets a majority of the board, acknowledging approving. and approving the summary then it's good to go that way if we do miss one or two but we still have a majority then we're good to go and everybody's mm -hmm. good but i think if we just give that little heads up time at the meeting that's being surmised and then as long as we kind of use oh, if i may just summarize following up on yes. your suggestion i think our takeaways are um, when summarizing discussions we will um, 
Uh, ideally, at the end of the discussion, there'll be a quick uh, huddle about what do we want, what's our summary, what are our bullet points that we can then wordsmith and capture, but then you've had that discussion, that we would ru run that back by you to the extent possible given time, but that it's better to go with even no one approving it at that point, um, but certainly with the majority that it's approved. And third, that unless it was a motion that was approved to make a formal recommendation, that word is not used. It would be the board discussed or explored the following issues or expressed an interest in the following items, something to that effect? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that we get into a process where there, <coughs> you know, it's not a surprise coming up on an agenda, that we know what we're getting ready to discuss and in, into. So any mo do we need a motion on this or do we just go forward? Okay, to the next issue. So the uh, next one is follow up on questions from June 27th. So um, in, our, in your last meeting, uh, there was a question about the follow-up on, uh, and I am paraphrasing here, three questions uh, about the ability for affordable rentals to be exempted from property tax. Could um, the city and county work together to um, extend property tax exemptions to affordable rentals for the purpose of limiting rent increases? And then the third was, um, why are rising expenses passed on to the affordable renter? Um, and we um, uh, did follow up on those this time to get the following response. In essence, uh, well, first, um, Judy, since you were the one that brought it up last time, and I think uh, it was your exchange with Kurt was how I got to those three summaries. Or did we miss anything, or does anyone else think we're, we've got all the questions there? Well, for that, for the questions where Kurt said that's a David Gear question. Right. Um, I went back and listened to watch the video and wrote down, and it was I think mostly Mason and Adam and I who had those questions. Yeah. So anyone else? I mean, I can nope, do, tell you what I can can, um, and and may have to come back if you have additional questions. But in essence, property taxation is governed by state law. Property tax exemptions are determined by state law. Mm. There are um, so the city and county cannot do anything besides advocate for changes. Um, the uh, current exemptions apply to housing authorities, so that's the single largest provider of affordable rentals in Boulder, and then um, to um, certain nonprofits providing certain types of affordable housing, and that's an application they can make to be exempt. And I know from working with um, Thistle, which is a large provider, that they do apply for all the ones that they're exempt. Um, for and they have renewed that. I, I assume that all the other nonprofits that manage affordable rentals that are eligible do that, and they've been told of that as um, over the years as they come on board with new properties. So that's um, there is uh, much more detail on that, and uh, the, the summary from the city attorney's office was, and it's property taxation. It's incredibly complex, and there's not a lot really great summaries, but um, there are, those are the two main exemptions that are in place already. And the third one is is not really a legal question so much as an approach. And the, uh, I'll just summarize the the responses to that about um, why rising expenses are passed on to the affordable renter. The the first is um, our expectation as a city in investing or requiring um, that people provide affordable housing, but typically investing in it and partnering with it, a provider is that they manage the business of running that property well so that we don't uh, run into a situation where the property isn't maintained well, people aren't being qualified properly, they're charging the wrong rents. Um, but on the, uh, as a business, um, we want them to operate in a sustainable manner. So the, the um, ability to accommodate uh, rising costs, whether it's insurance, taxes, utilities, landscaping, maintenance, um, and save for eventual replacements, um, those costs to the extent they increase have to be covered somehow. Otherwise, things get put off. So if you get an increase in your utilities that you're paying uh, and you are not allowed to increase your revenue, uh, you will scrimp on something that's important. Typically, maintenance and reserves are the first to go, uh, which gets to the quality of the rental unit and its sustainability over time. So um, there is a, uh, a need to operate them as businesses, or what happens is eventually they need a substantial amount of additional subsidy, or as we've seen in other communities, they're so um, poorly run uh, financially and physically that they are lost physically lost, torn down, removed, 
um, which is not an outcome we want when we're dedicated to permanently affordable housing. So that does not get to the magnitude of the increases, which is, I think, where the biggest concern is. And um, the philosophy behind uh, the AMI, forgetting about the other people who use it in the industry standards, is, is that you are targeting the affordability of an income tier, not individual households. And by definition, if, you're, if that income goes up or down, they can afford more or less. So that's the theory behind it. Um, and whether or not it's the appropriate metric is a whole different question that I, you will be discussing later, it looks like. The last thing um, I'll point out on this is that allowing uh, rents to change at, the, at, at um, no more than the AMI change actually is not related to their costs at all. If for somehow their costs were going down but the AMI were going up, um, that relationship would be the exact opposite. And the opposite is also true. Often costs are going up faster than the AMI. So um, I have no data to back this up, but the assumption, I believe, is that they balance each other out at some level. And, um, and none of that gets to the question of whether it's the appropriate metric to use, I would say. So. Judy, you have a question? Thank you. You can see it coming. Yes. <laughs> you lean in. <laughs> um, thank you. I, I, I have um, a great new friend who's been helping me do a little research, and she said that she heard um, from someone in the city that for-profit developers could partner with nonprofit or city housing authority and often get tax exemptions that way. So it's possible that many of the people who uh, don't have the issue of, ta of property taxes because they've already partnered. I is that your understanding as well? It is um, legally possible through sharing ownership in the property typically done through the creation of a low-income housing tax credit partnership in which you have a nonprofit or housing authority as one of the members of that partnership. The nonprofits and housing authorities all understand the value that they are creating by extending the property tax exemption, which is typically only housing authorities in those partnership cases, and um, achieve a, a compensation for you, typically in the form of either lower rents or um, ability for the housing authority to house people that they otherwise couldn't. Thank so you. it's, yeah, it is considered. I, just to add one more thing to the discussion is um, the co-ops in Boulder. A number of them have partnered with a nonprofit like Boulder Housing Partners. I think they might have a 1% share, and they get, um, they don't pay property taxes for the most part. To the yeah, they're structured so that the housing authority exemption extends to the ownership of those <laughs> properties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then what I think we're saying is that uh, he, that particular pro property would have to look at a different structure, a business structure in it. Um, I'm curious, with the expenses, are they spread equally or is there sliding based on, so like if the parking space was $100 and it went up for everybody across the board or do they, with the services, do they, um, take into consideration those that are in affordable units and it's a portion, a lower portion. So I believe, I was not there for the discussion, but I believe from what I've heard and what I saw that the um, concerns you're, that you're primarily concerned about are at Depot Square, yes. which is a for-profit owned affordable housing project in which um, it, it resides in a parking district mm -hmm. where parking is shared, unbundled, managed, and paid for everybody, all users. Um, and I don't, I cannot think of any other affordable housing properties other than those in that uh, Boulder Junction access district that are, um, that are in a similar situation where their parking is not included in the rent that they paid. Um, that uh, location is, um, whether you're market rate or affordable, parking is, is separate. And as far as I know, there is no sliding scale for people who uh, live in affordable units to access the parking garage spaces there. I think we're gonna see something similar off of Fruhoff's then mm -hmm. too, when that, with the parking stuff. 
Does anybody else have any other questions about that? Um, Crystal? That, the, the shared unbundled managed parking, or SUMP, was pretty much an experiment, uh, hoping to get it right out at the transit village. And so I think it is good input to know mm -hmm. that there's some issues that have come up. And I was going to send a little debrief to um, planning board just to let them know that this is an issue that's affected affordability for a number of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't, I mean, personally, I haven't quite figured this piece out because um, everybody knows I have five vehicles and, you know, motorcycles and everything else. And it's, um, when I think about, I was a single parent. So for me, my car, uh, getting the kids across town in between jobs, I was working two jobs doing, you know, and then act after school activities and stuff like that, it just wasn't feasible to ride the bus. It's just, not, and I can't, you know, the bikes and everything else. So I have a, I have a really tough time with this because as a person, I want to reduce all of that down, but when you're hauling bags and doing all that, it's it's difficult. So I have a hard time when it hits the affordable people who are already working two jobs and multiple kids. And so yeah, I'm not you know I'm just kind of putting that out there. Is that that's a it's a pill for me on that piece. I'm all for incentivizing removing of it, but it does seem to disproportionately hit the ones that are just trying to make it in our city. I think that's something that a lot of us agree on, and when we get to actually talking about that whole issue of affordable renters, I think we'll all get into that a lot. Yeah. And then just one more thing on Fruhoffs. Now, that came to Planning Board as a concept plan. City Council heard it also. But they did say, as part of their concept plan, that they weren't going to have any parking on site for their senior permanently affordable units. Mm -hmm. The parking on site is going to be for staff, for the restaurant, um, other people that, that staff the facility. But that was the decision that they made. Right. However, I'm going to add on that that, one, we're talking about seniors. They do offer the rideshare bus right, right. right from site, and we aren't talking about um, a group of individuals who are tossing around kids and everything else. So oh, yeah. it felt like a different population to me. So I did, I, I, when I was listening to that with the parking one, and again, they have a shuttle coming right to the place taking them to where. So I do have to take issue with that. Being a senior myself who values my independence highly, mm -hmm. um, I, although that's not an issue for you, that is an issue very near and dear mm -hmm. to seniors and very troublesome. Mm -hmm. I'll keep my piece super short. I just want to, everyone to keep in mind that when we're partnering with a business, a business's main goal is profitability. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I think they're thinking about that. Yep. When it comes down to any extra fees or anything. Um, so. Yeah, that's the squaring part. If you, Jeff, I just want to clarify, other than what may be happening at Fruhoffs, this is specific to Depot Square for the most part. Well, there are other affordable housing um, uh, buildings, some rental, some ownership in that same district. Okay. Um, and um, I did not go anticipate having the parking conversation or yeah. I would have researched that to, yeah. uh, or had someone else figure out uh, what the extent of this is for the 3,500 units out there. Right. Um, it's a minority, but it, I don't think it, it I, I would be, I don't think it applies to just the one project. I think okay. that's what you heard from. Right. It probably because it came up in the context of the um, higher rent increases that they're experiencing than others in the same area. I also think they have tighter parking in that area. So it's just, it's, they're getting pushed because of all of the different units. It's just harder to park over there. Yeah. But I think we're going to see this in projects as we move forward because it, to de-incentivize the car usage in certain zones is going to be big. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, I'm hearing it from planning board and I'm seeing it in city mm -hmm. council mm -hmm. is that that's the direction is that it's always going to be less cars, less cars, less cars than anything else. So, okay. So do, does anybody else have anything to add on that? Okay. So we'll move on to AMI um, and Adam. All right. We'll try to do this the correct way. <laughs> um, I'm going to, <laughs> Make a motion uh, to move AMI to a special committee uh, that will discuss AMI as a principal tool of measuring uh, for affordable housing. 
I second. And now we have discussion. Now we have discussion. Correct. I don't need discussion. I'm for it. <laughs> um, I think that's a, the right thing to do with this at this uh, point. So, yeah. I would also like to add that um, I know you have a lot of ideas around this and some thoughts around this, and mm -hmm. I know Adam does too, and I would really love to see if it goes over to um, special committee then that the two of you could be on that and talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Are you making a recommendation for membership? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would like to make a recommendation that... Um, because I know you're passionate about it, and I know you have a lot of great ideas around it, and I like to discuss it. But I, um, you know, listening mm -hmm. to you the other day is that you seem to have a good handle on it. So I, I would just like to see if you would be willing to, and you know, we could put if we're putting this on special committee, then um, uh, we're looking at a shorter term window for it, <laughs> and so it seems like just a few discussions, and you'd come back with your thoughts. Because as we've talked about with um, Jeff, et cetera, is that if you guys suss out something, then we have to talk about whether or not it goes on the work plan and our work plan and something bigger. So this is kind of just a sussing out committee of where do we see, what are some of the things, is there some short-term possibilities, there's some long stuff, or is it a wash? And you'd come back with, you know, either we can do this, we can't do that, or... Yeah. Um, with that in mind, should we... I would suggest, I guess, amending your motion mm -hmm. to actually put a date for us to come back with our report okay. to the board. You'd be coming back with a, a motion one way or the other. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excuse me a sec. I, I actually, before we second that, I'd actually like to consider just making the motion by itself and giving you guys a chance to talk and report at the next meeting what your plan and process is so you can have an opportunity to really Fair suss enough. it out a little yeah. more. So that next meeting would be August 22nd, so we'd amend uh, your motion to that you two would meet in special committee and report back on the 22nd with a, wouldn't be a plan, mm -hmm. it would be a... No, I think, I think you're just suggesting that if we're going to put a date on this, we just give ourselves time to figure that out first, right? No. Yeah, I think we should just stick to Adam's plain motion. You guys talk, and at the next meeting, give us a report on where you're at. That's all. And that doesn't have to be part of the motion, as far as I'm concerned. Just, you're the committee, we vote on that, and then you guys will tell us okay. at the next meeting. Fair enough. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily need to be a motion. I think we can handle right. that. Okay. Um, so, so just to recap, mm -hmm. the current motion is uh, to vote to form the committee to um, special committee to discuss AMI as a principal tool of measuring affordable housing. Um, that is the motion. I put the motion forward. And I second. I'll second. With you, too. Um, I was going to have that as a separate motion. Real okay. Quick. okay. Okay. So Judy seconded it, and all in favor? Aye. So it's unanimous. And the committee is now formed. Uh, now I'm going to make a motion uh, that Jacques and I will be the two members of the AMI committee. Special committee. Special committee. Because they're special. Yep. Special I'll committee. second that. <laughs> All in favor? Any discussion? <laughs> Any discussion, right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And it's unanimous. So we voted to um, form the AMI Special Committee and uh, elected Jock and Adam on the Special Committee. And it was all unanimous. Fantastic. Okay, one more. Independent study. So, oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. So this is the part through our email communication we talked at the beginning of the meeting where you said now I should bring up the other committee I want to form. I thought this is where you said New business. We're still in okay. uh, we're still in un okay. unfinished business. Yep. I have you. Okay, cool. I got you. Yeah, we got a line to go. Um, so one more under unfinished business, the independent study. So uh, last meeting we discussed whether or not to pilot over the next two meetings um, sorry 
at the last meeting we discussed whether or not we would um, pilot independent study but then everything kind of um, digressed and we didn't ever really kind of we kind of talked about potentially doing it so I wanted to bring it back to this meeting to see if there was any interest um, in the independent study thought which was uh, we have a few more agenda items and do um, do we, when we get to the agenda, want to look at doing independent study? Does anybody have questions on what independent study is? Okay. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the independent study piece was, um, what we realized is that we had so many things to get through that to educate us, um, and what was happening was that um, we were spending an hour to an hour and a half at the beginning of our meetings <clears throat> with these slide presentations from staff. So they were coming in, they're presenting a slide situation that we already get, and um, and then all they're doing is reading it to us and taking up an hour and a half. So in uh, an effort to be more efficient, what we were saying is that they would present that same stuff to us, which they did today for community benefits, we would read it, and instead of them coming in and spending an hour reading the same slides, they would just be prepped for about a 15 minute discussion of any questions that we would have. Um, so we could formulate, so we'd read the stuff, come up with our own set of questions, ask them the questions when they got here, and we're cutting out about an hour so that we can get more into the content of the work we wanna do versus having an hour set aside for that. And what Leonard brought up at that time was that not every one of our education pieces, like uh, the next one being f um, finance and uh, could be independent study, so we could choose some of them that we feel like we could independent study and the rest of them we'd put on the work plan. So what I'm asking right now is if there's interest in that, and if so, when we get to the agenda and reviewing the work plan, we'll look at the ones that are up and decide if there's any of those that we could independent study and ask questions on. Does that make sense? So your motion is just to... Uh, is to the motion would be, um, uh, is there interest in independent study? And if so, we'll uh, move it to the agenda. So we just wanna say yes to independent study or not, and then we'll, when we get to the agenda, we'll decide which ones we can do and maybe pilot them um, twice. So we've already discerned that next meeting, August 8th is taken, August 22nd was taken, and the one, August 22nd has the finance one on it. So it would be the meeting after that one and the next one that we would consider packing in a few more. If um, we, there are two topics for the 22nd, uh -huh. the city's community investment program and housing finance. Right, and those Related, are but separate. Um, and we were thinking that if you wanted to test this approach with the community investment, that lends itself well to, here's the information, if you have any questions, we'll answer them. However, the housing finance, we will feel like would be better served with a more of a uh, full-on presentation. Do I have a question? Yes. Um, to you. Um, is it crucial that we do both on August 22nd, or can we just try the pilot on the one that you thought would lend itself to that and arrange to do the finance one later? Is there any pending city council discussion or anything? There is not. Um, we have uh, already moved, uh, so the housing finance will be provided by BHP staff. Uh, we've already moved that, um, and it would be preferable to have them on the same time because they're two sides of the same coin. How do you pay for affordable housing? Well, part of the way you pay for it is money from the city. Um, so many of the issues and discussion points are overlapping. Um, and if you wanted to separate them, we'll separate them. Is it also possible to delay both of them and have them be together at a later date? Um, if that's what you choose to do, that's okay. certainly possible. Okay. It is your, from um, my understanding of what you wanted to see for that day, you had two items essentially. One was the community engagement, and this was the other, and you had directed us to look at it and see how it could be done in an hour. So that's what we've been planning for. Okay, so I, I don't have to talk about that now. I can talk about that under the agenda review coming up for the next meeting or so. You know I mean? Are you talking about a specific item you'd like to see on the agenda? 
that sort of topic, yeah. Okay, yeah. The, yeah uh, so now I don't need to go on right. with it. Yeah. So um, if it's helpful as well on this proposed uh, work plan are some of the things that are coming up. So again, all we're asking right now is are we interested in piloting independent study? Can I have, I have another question actually for Jeff. Um, do you see from staff's perspective uh, cons to that structure? Uh, I've been through a lot of presentations, some of which are, um, um, don't necessarily add a lot of value compared to just reading it yourself. Others are substantially much more informative and incorporate different ways of presenting the information. So um, losing that opportunity, um, which isn't gonna happen on all of them, is is a loss, I would say, in your overall ability to understand. Uh, and I, I think that's more around the quality of the presentation and the approach that's taken. I would like to distinguish between topics that are up for public hearings and, and formal recommendations and action than those that are up for general discussion. I believe the former public hearing should include a, a substantive recap of what's in the materials for the public to have the advantage of that if they haven't had the opportunity to do the independent study. Great, that was my second question. Yep. You would recommend to us ones that you think it is vital that we hear, so. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I I think it's a great idea for however that agenda piece is worked out that um, staff works with the board to make sure that there's a couple things we try as a pilot, should we vote to do that, um, that can be reasonably shortened. Um, I also want to make clear that we're just talking about we're not agreeing to the work plan or to anything else by agreeing to this. We're just agreeing that we think it's a good idea to, to do um, a couple presentations in real shortened form and see how that helps our time, right? That's yes, all the, uh, the presentations are not in short form. The presentations would be given to us to do to read before right. we got there. And you had mentioned in in an email you sent out about um, that we should have our questions in four days before. Is, is that still part of the motion? Or? Uh, that we'll get to the uh, agenda when we, um, it's under new business about okay. this format on this agenda. Okay. Um, you know, I, one, I did support the formation of this housing board and one of the reasons I supported it was I felt that there was a real benefit for the community to learn more about specific, well, housing in the community and then specifically the affordable housing needs in the community. So in this first phase, as you're uh, learning about all the different aspects of housing, so is the community, as they also learn that it's on TV. People actually don't know that. Um, so I would be cautious on how you do this. And because I think that as I said, there's a benefit to the whole community, and uh, especially on investment and housing finance. It sounds like a dry topic, but you're going to read it, and then you're going to say, I have a question on page 15, and then the staff will be trying to put it up on the screen if it's a spreadsheet or whatever. So in a way, you're going to be repeating yourself. I mean, if you want to try it, I'd say fine, but um, do it very selectively and carefully. Having said all that, the one thing that really bugs me is city council, they seem to be pretty good about a split cr screen with a presentation and then the presenter or even the presentation. But for the boards, not so much. So. I think it really is important for the public to be able to see those presentations. So the next time you do a presentation, if it's during the public, the fourth Wednesday of the month when it's on TV, I'd say coordinate it with um, Channel 8 so they can provide that information that you're looking at to the public. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just going to add to be clear um, when we were talking about the independent study, like the big ones, that's not what this is for. This is for some of the smaller stuff that we could just start to clear off of the agenda to create more time, because I agree with you. I think it's important that the public see that and hear it, and yeah. as well as us. Plus, part of some of these things, because they have been given in front of City Council and in plan Planning Board, are already recorded, like the Ponderosa one, um, because I was here in the audience for the City Council one, too, with the mobile home. We could That would have been a great example of, uh, um, of you know, watching the City Council one that was already up and our packet and then just asking questions. So that would have been a, and we might now be a little too deep in this once we start talking about uh, which ones we still have left to go. But if there is one being open to um, possibly doing it as an option. Well, and that's a good example, if I may, um, where you have the links that you could put in the packet and then the public can be looking at the packet and you're really having yeah, a discussion yeah. rather than you know, a presentation. I don't, maybe council planning board hasn't seen specifically the investment uh, policies or housing, the financial, uh, the housing financing. Putting links in. Um, and actually, when we talk about the web page as well um, on our front page, that's something to me, as I know we have them in the packets, you know, you and I have talked about that when we bring on new board members. I know that we've talked about that it's all in the packets, but on that web page, we have a few hot links to different things on there, but having all this stuff with links to it would be fantastic. And then that way, mm -hmm. um, anybody can refer back to, like if for some reason, a couple of years down the road, we're talking about community benefits and we reference something, somebody can go back and look on all of the presentations and documents that we have of what we're discussing. So just something for the future in the process. How would it be to everyone if we formed a little committee of the board chair to work with staff on selecting a few of the presentations that would be ripe for being shortened in this way, and then to get back to us at the next meeting and um, see, and then we can then, you know, staff, does that make any sense to do? And, I, and I'm and i okay with that because I think kind of Jeff and I are sussing out some of those things anyway, and we'll be talking about the work plan as we get further into this, so. Um, okay, we can, we can do that under new business after we actually make this first motion. Yeah. Okay, so what's that first motion? <laughs> From what I can gather, it's essentially to approve doing it. Approve uh, talking, uh, talking piloting, about the pilot. Approve piloting. Um, well, we'd want to approve. As, the I, as I understood the motion, it was do, do you, we as a board want to try this? and see how it goes. Yes. Yep. So the motion would be, do we um, uh, approving, piloting, independent study for potentially a couple of work plan items and more to happen in new business with more detail in new business? Or, or you could approve right now i don't know it needs to be new it's part of the same discussion you could yeah. say i move that we uh, that that the chair and staff select two or three items over the next three months to try this and at the end of that trial we do a, a review and see if we want to continue it what he said <laughs> <laughs> so somebody has a second second uh, what well, yep. somebody has to make the motion. Somebody has to make the motion. He did. No. Well, he I can't did. move anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. We got an empty seat up. <laughs> um, can Corey read it back and then it can? Motion. Yeah. Yeah, when I said what he said. Okay. I think Corey's going to read back okay. the good. Approving piloting independent study, potentially a couple of work plan items and more detail in new business. Chair and staff select two or three items for trial. Nog seconded. Who, who no made, one made the motion. I made the motion. I'll say it. Yes, Moyer made the motion. Nog uh, seconded. All in Is favor. Is that correct? Yes. So that that means for. I just want to clarify. So that means we'll hear what ideas you had, and then we'll make our final decision if we're ready to go with those. Is that correct? As we work out work plan. Yeah. 
yes. when and where and that sort yeah, of Yeah, we'll propose them, and then you guys see if that feels comfortable cool. to you. Mm -hmm. So did that um, kind of amendment to that make sense, Corey? Um, so everything you said, plus uh, we'll ch Jeff and I will choose a couple to suggest back to the board for approval. Including time, including dates. Just clarification, uh, it <laughs> sounds like, um, well, can I suggest some wording for this? Yes. Um, so the motion would be uh, to, that the chair and staff would select two, do you want two or three? Two. two um, opportunities to test this approach of no presentation, just questions and answers based on the packet materials within the next three months. The topics to, will be um, uh, su submitted to the board as a whole for approval prior to choosing that approach. With dates. With dates. I second. <laughs> I know I can't. I motioned it. <laughs> I'll make the motion. Anybody want a second? It's the same motion. Right, sure. So Judy seconds, all in favor? I just want to say one thing. I do want to caution you. There has to be some framework when this comes up at the meeting that sets the stage about the project. If you only yeah, want it to be uh, five minutes or ten minutes, but really, if you have the public watching, yeah. that would be really helpful, rather than just dive in to the questions. But somebody, whether it's staff, whether it's the board, you know, could just frame it. Thank you. And why you're asking these questions. Thank you. Right. Good point. So how about um, an amendment that we put with a preamble, with a brief preamble? Does that make sense? I don't know that we need to yeah, I don't think motion out. I think yeah. we just keep okay. that in mind that that's how cool. we should yeah. present this. Right. So vote. We're still out of vote. Yep. Vote. Unless there's further discussion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. So on to new business. New business. First one up. Voting chair and vice chair. Did everybody read and receive their memo from Aaron? Yes. Uh, Judy? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so as you know that we need to vote the position in, and we can either do it this meeting or next meeting, but she is encouraging us to do it relatively quickly. Um, so is, uh, I guess, how would we proceed with that? Just off putting it opening to the floor of saying so anybody? You make a motion to vote for chair and vice chair, and if we don't get enough a second or a majority vote, then we don't do it. Okay. Uh, or do we want to say we're ready to vote this time today, or do we want to postpone it till next time? I, I think the, whoever makes the motion can make it however they want. I, I have a question. Yes. Is it okay for people who know Robert's rules of orders really well for us to have a little discussion first before we make the motion, which might keep us from making a motion and then amending it and then changing it? That sort of thing, that we just have a little discussion? It's at the discretion of the chair, or in this case, the acting chair, um, whether to modify that. And any one of you can object if you don't agree with the chair or acting chair's judgment on that. Okay, let's, uh, is, is everybody okay with the discussion? You want to okay. make a vote? Well, just to see where everyone's at. I'm, just I'm so. happy with the discussion. Discussion, yeah. yeah. Okay, then go ahead, Judy. So, to me, it makes sense that you become the interim chair rather than just the chair today until the new board member replacing Leonard is in place and then we revisit it. That, that's what seems to make the most sense to me. Okay. And Jeff, correct me if we're wrong, but we have to vote this time or next time from what Aaron was saying. Oh, right? so I'm not saying no. to not vote no. on that. So their, saying their uh, selection of officers is subject to the approval of the board on whatever schedule you want. It's typically a one-year term, but you can change that. There's no provision for interim. Okay, so. Um, so, and you need to have a chair. Mm -hmm. So you can treat it as interim in the sense that, um, you know, you would schedule a new election whenever you wanted to. But um, that would be, I believe, how Aaron would interpret your bylaws. So then my inclination would be to have Mason be the board chair 
that we will then revisit when the new board member is on board with the board. <laughs> Add a board to that. <laughs> and, and you will need to elect a vice chair. You have right. both officers. Right. You know, um, when Aaron Brockett got elected to city council in November, Brian Bow Bowen was the vice chair. And so Brian continued to serve in that capacity, um, and we had no official chair, but he ran the meetings and everything until March when the new appointee was made. Now, in this case, I would not recommend, you know, anticipate, you know, I would recommend asking city council to appoint a new board member sooner than their regular recruitment. And they often do a mid-year recruitment because they have some openings on other boards. I think maybe three boards might have openings. And, um, you know, and that worked out well. We have quasi-judicial hearings, and there was a bit of a problem with six people because it takes four affirmative votes of the planning board to pass a project. Not the number that are there, but to pass the project. It's a little bit of a different situation here. But whatever you desire to do, the only advantage of waiting to the new board is you develop more, uh, you include them, sooner but i think whatever you want to do you're a new board and you want to be fully functioning so it's up to you so um just to recap exactly what aaron said was as vice vice chair mason acts in the chair capacity until there is a new election um, you can have a new election at any meeting. It doesn't have to be tonight if you would like some time to consider which lucky soul will take on the new role. But I would do it in the next one to two meetings. Bylaw requires a chair position but does not have to be immediate. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that was back out there on the on Yeah, the it sounds to me that that is reflecting what Crystal just said with with Aaron, um, he acted as vice chair. Yeah, he he Brian just did. Brian did. Brian acted when Aaron left. Brian just essentially filled the role of the vice chair, serving as the chair, acting as chair. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think she's just suggesting here that that's fine to do, but the shorter time frame is probably better than a longer time frame. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I think so too. I think what I would suggest is that we look at what the term at this point, maybe we look at the term of Leonard's, what his term would have been. And I can't remember what the date was when we. By law, say it's a year, generally a year, unless otherwise agreed right. by the um, by the board. So yeah, I'm trying to remember the date when when that term began. April twenty third. I think that's right. That might be right, yeah. Fourth, fourth Wednesday in April. Right. Um, I guess there's two ways to go about it. One is we make a vote now for Mason to be chair to that point in time, at which point I imagine we will have a new board member, hopefully sooner than later, but that Mason would continue through until that point, and then we would just go ahead and elect, at that point, a new chair or vote to keep Mason in place, but basically have Mason fill out the remainder of Leonard's term. The other one is, as soon as we get a new board member, we make a new vote at that point for a permanent chair, in which case I would say that, you know, we're just setting that as the point in time when we're going to make a vote. The only reason I think about that is just the dynamic of who that person is and how they might influence and impact us. Um, so those are the two options that I kind of see as feasible. Adam. Adam Poole. Um, I think we might be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves just because, number one, it's council's discretion whether or not we get a board member before. Right. And they're pretty packed. Right. So at the earliest months away, mm -hmm. um, right. well, that, that's one thing. So I think we should take care of business now. Um, and I think we should also have that discussion about whether or not we would recommend adding an additional person in the interim ourselves. Um, 
because I have some thoughts on that as well. Which we have on the list. Don't yeah. uh, I saw Judy. She was like, but I was just. <laughs> no, I, I also want yes, to say. Yes, it's on the list. <laughs> council does have the capacity to just simply appoint someone, so it doesn't necessarily need to take months. And I'm most comfortable, as I said before, with us voting to have Mason be the chair and revisit it after council has appointed, which they're either going to do sooner or in March. So that's how we'll, it'll, you know, and we just leave it open to say when have Mason be chair and revisit it. That doesn't necessarily mean Mason's out of there. <laughs> it means we re just revisit it. So you're saying it, election now, new election, if we get a fifth. I'm yeah. just saying revisit it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So I, I would add two things. One, I would go for an election now or next week or whatever, or next meeting or what it feels like weekly, doesn't it? Um, or next meeting. Um, just because for me personally, it feels better knowing that I'm elected into it versus just rolling into it because it happened that way. And two, um, as a new board member, it feels like a lot of pressure to come on the board and have to vote for somebody I don't, one, not for, but just in the process of ha trying to catch up with all of us and then also know that everybody's waiting to vote at that same time. So I'd personally say to finish uh, Leonard's term mm -hmm. and then um, that term actually does coincide with board selections which my guess is, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that we're not gonna, they're gonna select when they select at that time. Um, so my my request would be to do a vote tonight um, for chair and vice chair and um, to, for the rest of this term and revisit at the end of that term. Um, one other reason that I think I'm, I'm leaning in that same direction is that there was discussion of moving this to a seven member board and if that is something that's going to happen in this next um it would have to be voted on in, in, well, i think in they november would, they yeah. would vote on it in november exactly oh, that's right we're and then we expand it through this term um and i think it would probably be beneficial for cohesiveness to just vote for a chair and vice chair today if we choose to do so and then fill out the remainder of Leonard's term. Can Any other just... discussion around that? Any choice on um, or does somebody feel so inclined to make a motion? I guess we'd have to identify yeah. who does anybody else want to throw their hat right. in for chair? That's well okay One hold up back back yeah. back do we want to vote tonight? Um, do we want to talk about the fifth board member first? Um, I have it on um, as the last new right. um, item. I guess we could absolutely move it to this point. And, um, but does that confuse? Maybe we should just chunk it out first. Do we want to vote tonight or not? And then um, who wants to be throw their hat in the ring for chair and who'd want to um, throw their hat in for vice chair and then talk about the new member. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a plan? Mm -hmm. Okay, so first, yeah, anybody? The, the only thing, oh, well, I'm just kind of jumping the gun here, but the only thing that I'd say is the notice on the website did not include all of this. So you might just want to put it out there when you have it noticed, even if it holds it up for a week. So you're actually noticing, you're actually putting this on the website. So you're saying you're you want to see till, you would like to wait on a, so you're saying I would like to wait on the vote until uh, next August meeting, 8th. which would be August 8th for a vote so that it could be noticed. Even yeah. though August 8th is going to be a retreat, so nobody could come and see it anyway. They, oh, no, it will be open to the could, public. Yeah. Still oh, retreats are open to the public? Yeah. Okay. Still open to the public. The only reason I suggest that if we talk about, we really should walk the talk mm -hmm. if we're talking about public engagement and transparency. And, you know, if it holds it up a week, you can have a special meeting and take an action and then go into your retreat, quote, study session mm -hmm. format. Okay. Where there's no public... Uh, participation 
Does the public participate in that portion? Well, there, there's the opportunity. Well, you, you haven't set up a procedure where you have a study session format yet. So your meetings are all, uh, the, all of your meetings will always be open to the public. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the opportunity for public participation will be a feature in every meeting unless, uh, I don't even know if you could approve um, no public no participation. Public. Council has it, but I don't know if anyone else does. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's just my two yep. cents. Yep. <laughs> so, um, how about I try to make a motion here? Wrap this one up. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm waiting. Go ahead. Okay. The, I make a motion that we. Do we need to table it? No. Yes, table it. No, well, it's not on our agenda to vote. I, I, I think the motion would be I move that we elect as chair and vice chair at our next regularly right. scheduled meeting, it's August 8th. To fill yeah, up the it's term. tabled. It's not, uh, yep, it's I move yeah. to table this until the August 8th meeting to vote for chair and vice chair. Right. So. It's not well, on the agenda, so you're not tabling anything. You could just say, here's what you could actually do is say. Well, it is. It is on our agenda. Yeah, but that wasn't on the web. Right. But it we've adopted it. Um, we adopted it and yeah. we're amending I mean, why don't we pre It's up to you. Yeah. 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 I think yes, let's, let's, <laughs> let's say that. Why don't you just make the motion to vote next time? Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. I make the motion that we vote for chair and vice chair at the August 8th meeting. Second. Any discussion? Sure, Adam, I got that right. <laughs> that process. You got to say something. You're doing great. <laughs> Okay, so vote. All in favor? Aye. I do have a question, though. Yes. Can we, um, is it okay today to discuss if there's any interest in people being vice chair, just so we can think about it a little bit? Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll just open for discussion then. Anybody who, is there anybody who wants to throw in their hat or be considered for next week for um, chair or vice chair? Vice chair, not chair. Vice chair. Okay. Judy? Vice chair. Okay. Oh, then I will, I will withdraw my name. I'm cool with Adam doing it. That's great. Okay. okay. I'm good. Uh, I so. assume there's no one else for chair. Yeah, does anybody else want to go for chair? Okay. Okay, well, let's make the official vote next time so the public can have their... Right. Okay. So that was discussion. So we're going on next to, next agenda item, hiring a facilitator. Um, so this one is uh, a motion to hire um, a facilitator for August 8th meeting um, and that we discuss any supporting um, goals that we would have for a facilitator if we chose to vote one in. So I need to start with a motion, right? Yep. Whether um, I move to have a facilitator for, oh, did you have one? Well, that was what I put there, which I think is essentially what you wrote. So I if you want to check oh, it out. Oh, why don't you do it? Yeah, you wrote it. <laughs> All right. Hey. <laughs> just read that. Um, so I move the board select and hire a facilitator to support us in structuring our procedures, improving our communication and decision making, and facilitating our goal selection and work plan process. The engagement of the facilitator will be for up to eight hours in either one full day or two half day sessions, or as the board sees fit. The board will authorize the use of HAB budget to contract the selected facilitator. Um, so a few clarifications. The HAB does not have any budget authority. Um, and the Division of Housing Budget can support the cost of a facilitator. Okay. So you, you don't have the ability to direct us to spend money. Okay. Um, and we've, we have some money. <laughs> <laughs> so let me amend. And we're willing to spend it on this. I'll so in the last line, the board will request of staff that we budget. And the other clarification I'd say is, well, I, with the timing that we have, uh, depending on what you mean by select, um, you, th there may not be much selection exactly. procedure or options. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have lined up a skilled facilitator who's available. We found somebody who's willing and able to do it. 
Okay. Um, and it may not be much more selection process than that because she needed to know and I said I'd tell her tomorrow. <laughs> All right, very Do good. we want to use her um, name in the motion then or just say that, that to hire her facility? Heidi Brinkman is the consultant who um, is available. Right. A yep. couple others have been or were not available. Yep. And that's as far as we got in the time we had available. So I move the board select Heidi Brinkman um, to support us in structuring our procedures, improving our communication and decision making, facilitate our goal selection and work plan process. Yeah. Um, and then would that be a second motion for the engagement of uh, the facilitator would be up for two, eight hours and a full one day or uh, two half day sessions, board seat fit. Should we just scrap that part of it and then? Um, I yeah. just you, you should because we don't you can't make that decision how much to use the facilitator you can express a desire and we can decide whether we have the money to do it or not okay, okay. I guess I was trying to limit that yeah we won't and, go Mason, and usually a facilitator will probably interview the board or have some out it's sort of a outreach. short time frame but some kind of outreach to the board and I don't know, the sooner the better. We've worked with Heidi before, and uh, that's what she's done. So just anticipate that and yeah. get on it. Okay, Remember, so let's, okay. Um, if you want to read back that, and I'll second you, and then we can open for discussion. Um, should I use Heidi's name, or should I just say facilitator, and it's going to be? Better to just use facilitator. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so I move the board select and hire a facilitator to support us in structuring our procedures, improving our communication and decision making, and facilitate our goal selection and work plan process. Period. I second. Te technically, you can't hire somebody. Right. Um, so I would say, uh, if I may, um, you know, I move that the uh, board <laughs> request staff, staff to, to hire a facilitator. Okay for our retreat. I move the yeah. board select and staff. I'm sorry, I, I, I move that staff. staff. That's what I needed to change, okay. Staff. Select a facilitator to support us in structuring our procedures, improving our communication and decision making and facilitate our goal selection and work plan process. Second, sorry. Discussion. 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 Anyone? I like the idea of up to eight hours, um, so that makes it finite time, and we have to decide, or I don't know, is she, would she be planning on four hours the first time, and then we'd have a second one if needed, or? I asked her for her availability for the three to six window that that meeting scheduled for. I assume that she is planning it will be some before and some after, so she's probably got a four hour block minimum for the meeting itself and then whatever prep and wrap up. Anybody else? Do you have discussion? No. Okay. Uh, so we can move to a vote. All in favor, aye. Aye. So it's unanimous. So Jacques made a motion, I seconded. All unanimous. Great, so just a time check, we're at 8.40, so we're running a little bit behind. Um, if, if I may? Yes. So given the time frame, um, John Letter. <laughs> if there's some way that you can indicate what you hope to get out of having a facilitator, I mean, the, the motion language is, is um, not wide open, but it's still not particular. So if there's anything that either you can each submit your hopes by email quickly so she can start to plan for how to interact with you before the meeting or um, right now have a quick conversation, that would um, make her ability to support you greater. Great. So might I suggest then for all of us is that you prepare um, some form of maybe a couple paragraphs or something for her of any um, goals and priorities that we would have individually and send them to Corey. And then she can pass them on since we don't have her email, Heidi's email. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Yep. Yes? Okay, great. So we will send to um, 
you a paragraph from each of us, and my guess is, as you and I talked earlier, is that she'll get back to each of us um, to do some prep work before we get into the actual. I, I can't or however to she that, wants but, to um, yeah. But at least this will give her uh, a jump off point of what each of us were thinking, and then she'll structure it from there. Um, okay, so we've got through the facilitator. Um, all right, reformatting the agenda. Um, so as we're working through this, this is the reformat on the agenda. Um, again, as I, I've sent out a couple of emails on it, and what the hope was was to create more clarity, streamline things a little bit, um, have the public be able to anticipate what we were doing here, and even more so than that, as we can kind of see as we're working through some of these, um, I don't want to say issues, but items, that um, when we put them in motion format before we get here, we've thought them out and we feel a little bit more clear. Plus it um, requires us to kind of put out some information to our team, to the board, um, to kind of flush out the idea. Uh, so that's what I was thinking about for the agenda. The hope is then that um, everybody could have your ideas then the week before so that it gets published, which means that when we get done with this meeting for the next couple of days, you really want to think about what you want to get on there. And then we'd still have room for last minute items as they pop up. But at least you'll know what the next person's thinking and what they're doing and if there's any crossover on any agenda items. And so we could tighten up some things if, if they pop up. But again, I think it helps with communication and engagement. Does anybody else have anything they want to add? Yes. A couple of questions. Um, could you, as board chair, send out an email to everyone reminding us to do it? That's reminding us to send, here's the agenda as it is now. Please send your ideas within the next day or two so we can get it on. Jeff? Yeah. Um, at this point, at the, in this, your agreement is to set the agenda for the 8th tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And unless you change that, there wouldn't be the opportunity to add items, okay. change them prior to us publishing so as it. So things come up, they just come up at the last minute for agenda review. And that has a downside as okay. you, as right. some of you have noted already. So right. it, if you wanted to come up with a different, I mean, your bylaws say there's a chair and vice chair set the agenda week before. Um, okay. So you have, a, that's two options and you can come up with multiples others if you'd like okay. to try and make this work better for you. So then what was the part you just said about sending an email? I'm sorry, I didn't get that then. So what are we sending? Oh, that was our ideas for the other thing. Okay, got it. All right, then here's my uh, thoughts about the agenda setting. Um, I looked at a lot of agendas too that other boards use, and um, I really like your idea that you didn't have time to do in this agenda about adding a sentence or two about matters that would give a little more information to the public and also touch tone sort of for us. Um, but also I saw one other thing that some boards do that I thought was really helpful, they have it divided by what's discussion and what needs a vote. So you can see real clearly what's just discussion and what's just vote. And, um, and I thought that was also a really helpful thing for clarification that I'd like to fold into this. Crystal, you were nodding your head like you've seen those. Do you have anything to add? Um. I think so. I'm a little bit concerned about not being able to add motions after, like, I would love to add a motion at some point, I'm sure, between this meeting and the next meeting, but if, if we can't do that because we have to have agenda um, discussion at the end of this meeting. Well, so I'll add in that um, the reason we initially got rid of doing the vice chair chair um, agenda meetings is that there was issues that were coming up around it, so I just felt like we needed to do them all together um, instead of in those meetings. Right. Um, so I'm okay with going back, and J Jeff and I talked about him today, even while we were, uh, you know, he was giving me guidance on, on uh, structuring for this, is, is I'm okay with going back to that one week before having the vice chair chair um, meet for the agenda items, and then that way it gives us in our two week meetings, one week to get all the stuff over and it still leaves space for, as we've normally done for the pop-ups, but then that means that we'd have to 
have another motion to go back to how the bylaws were with chair and vice chair um, agenda meetings. And then, um, then everybody could submit their stuff up until one week before and we would set it on the agenda. So it's my understanding that stuff comes up mm -hmm. and there will always be the opportunity for you to put in an, a motion at the last minute. This is just to try and give more clarity and space to it. Um, we can't actually do that right now because we don't even have a vice chair for the next meeting, so we can't have an agenda meeting like that. I suggest we stick to this, but um, but but that we know that we can send in motions. And you do it a week before the meeting is when you post it? A week before is when we uh, want to have the agenda and supporting materials um, posted so the public has adequate opportunity to know what you're going to discuss. and. <laughs> be prepared to talk about it. So the challenge right now is um, all of the things, as was noted, all of the things that were added tonight, no one had a chance to know about. Most of them are procedural and probably not of particular interest. So yes, you, uh, most boards have a process by which under matters you can bring up stuff like that and it's best to minimize it. That was well said. It's best to minimize it. The other thing is, theoretically, under matters, when there's an item and you vote on it, you should open it up for public comment. Now, what City Council does is they usually will make the motion, have a discussion, then open up the whole slew of things together. Does anybody have a comment on these five or six items? And then they'll take a vote on one item after another. You can do it just like you did it tonight, that's fine. But theoretically, when you make a motion and you're gonna have a vote, you do open it up for public here, public participation, public comment. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing, I, I do like it that you put the, that you're gonna put the action, there'll be a vote or whatever it is, but I'd also suggest whoever's making a motion to include it, so it gets included in the whole packet. And if there's just one or two, uh, maybe a little bit longer than the, quote, agenda title, even if it's under matters, so the, the AMI, it would say AMI discussion for subcommittee, and then you'd have your motion in the packet and maybe a little bit further discussion. So someone from the public would have some kind of context. And then the other thing is, I do think there should be the um, public hearing items, and those are kind of bigger items that you would have a special agenda slot for after, um, you know, after public participation, approval of meetings and stuff. Just to add, uh, um, in addition, public hearings were not on this agenda, but we, you did one before, and it was right. on the agenda that way. Also, matters from council are not on this agenda, but you have had those before, too. So they're not, rather than have them on the agenda and say none, they're just not yeah. on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. And that, if you would rather have it a different way, we can certainly do that, too. No, I think if yeah. you're not going to have anything, any public hearing items, you don't right. list them. But I think this is a good uh, idea to to let the public know that there would be votes and be able to find a motion mm -hmm. somewhere. Um, I'm just looking at, I'm just around this thing. I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking about our meetings and trying to structure an agenda at the end of our meeting for the next one, two weeks ahead. And it seems like it may not be best use of our time just for going forward to be doing it in that manner. So I kind of, I would lean to going back to our previous model. Um, Unfortunately, we don't ready. have a vice chair right now. No, no I need mean, when we're ready. When we're ready. Okay. Just put well, that out. And if a vice chair or a chair couldn't be present for whatever reason, the meeting would still happen. So I don't know that not having one elected affects your ability to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, let, I think, are you done? I'm done. Okay. So within that structure, um, when there's an, ad, the few times we did it, people still had extra information they wanted to add. 
when that first came out, they had an opportunity to add things. Is that correct? That'll still happen. It's up to you guys how you want to decide. Do you want to just delegate it completely? Do you want to ask that that agenda, yeah. there's a preliminary and a chance to weigh in before the week right. deadline is up? Totally up to you guys. I, uh, I mean, I want to just make it clear that at no point are we saying that at any point are you not allowed to make a motion. It's not, that's not being said. What's being said is what gets onto the agenda um, and how much and by when can we get it on the agenda uh, for public. And so um, right now, as we stand with the agenda at the end of the day or at the end of this meeting, we have to come up with what's going to be noticed for the public at the end of this meeting. Um, what we're suggesting is reverting back so that um, uh, we can collect, like, like I did for this one, collect everybody's thoughts and ideas that they did have um, and get as much possible for one week before. And that gets published. And even then, we still added your couple new items mm -hmm. when we got here. So then it goes back to what Crystal's saying by not having so many th new things um, presented is that we'll have captured most of them with only a couple that will be last minute changes. Uh, or additions and hopefully what are, we get into then is a pattern where instead of waiting to the last couple of days and we all then start looking at our information and bombarding all the agenda items right then that actually we spend maybe the next couple of days after our meeting collecting our thoughts getting them all prepared and then we kind of have that little reprieve up until the meeting does that make sense mm -hmm. so it seems like we have two things going on um, accepting or making a motion to accept this agenda and whether or not we want to revert back. Is that what everybody's hearing? This agenda structure. Yes, yes. this format. So, and I do like this agenda structure. I just want to know if we also can add separating as much as possible discussion items from items we have to vote on. I just think that'll be more comprehensible for people to read. Can I ask, so here it's, um, are you talking about just within the structure of this that yes. all the all the vote items are in one chunk? But what, Let's look at. This. Let me just summarize, if I may. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this will be helpful. I hope so. I've heard three things that you're hoping to get. One is identify it, whether it's a discussion item, a public hearing, a vote, you know, whether there's going to be a recommendation to council. That that's one. Adding a short description of the item, not just the words, you know, a little more expanded than we have here. And then third if there's a motion that someone is going to propose that it's in the agenda. Sounds good. Did that capture everything? Yes, and the, um, the expanded definition should come from the person putting the item forward. Okay. Because then otherwise it leaves the other person up to interpreting what's being okay. said, so um, the description can come from the person putting, it, putting that piece forward. Okay. Um, and uh, Judy wants to see it organized based on category. I'm good. I feel good enough that if it's that way, if everything is clearly marked discussion, mm -hmm. vote, it doesn't, have to be it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Your bylaws actually specify how you're supposed to set up your agendas, so that, that's how they are right now. And we'll try it with the addition. You have the opportunity to change that order of items and how, you, how your agendas are structured if you want. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're continuing with the same group grouping? We will continue with um, you know, the matters, the you know, approach of call to order, right. gender review, or actually, I think a minute, I can't remember if minutes or gender review comes first, public participation, yes. and then into. I just don't know how that, that uh, how it shifted so that you felt okay. Like, what, what happened that made you feel differently? Jeff. <laughs> as so long as those three components are in the okay, items, so however they're ordered, the it's okay. <laughs> make Judy feel okay with it. Because I'm like, I didn't notice that there was anything. Okay. Okay, so Corey, can you read back what he said and we can make a motion on that then? Is that, is, yes. Identify if it is a public hearing, a discussion, or vote adding a short description of item, and then you added comes from the board member bringing the item forward, and if motion is proposed, it is in the agenda. Okay, so um, I move to accept this agenda format with that criteria. 
moving forward for all future agendas? Don't think that's necessary, but okay. yeah. So I move to accept the current agenda format, including the three items for our new agendas. Second. Thank you. I was like, that was a pregnant pause. Pregnant pause. <laughs> All in favor? Discussion. Any discussion? discussion? Did we just discuss it? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's unanimous. So then the second piece of that has to be, um, wow, boy, after nine, I fry, don't can I? I? Can I ask a quick uh -huh. interjection? Um, if it is nine, do we need to extend? Probably not a bad idea. I mean, it's so council's process. practice, but. Um, I move to extend. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, just trying Unanimous. to do this. Okay, so then the second portion of that is, um, are we staying, carrying over how we're making agendas or are we reverting um, back to the bylaws so that we have the longer time to make the agenda? Seems like since you had said that we don't need the vice chair on this next one and we're gonna vote on the next one, that we're okay with one meeting, um, we'd be okay with one meeting not having vice chair while we make the agenda? Is everybody comfortable with that? One meeting that is then sent out to the whole board that we can give feedback to. Perfect. I like that. Um, so we want to, uh, the motion would be we're reverting back to the bylaws on agenda making with chair and vice chair and staff with, can we say a 24 hour, for one meeting until the vote occurs with, uh, can you, 24 hours? No, I thought that got lost there. So I'm sorry. The, um, that, go. No, you just restate it. Yeah. I vote we revert back to HAB's original bylaws for agenda setting with chair and vice chair with staff for one, um, for the meeting of the 8th. Um, the part you had so far about you recommend, you move, that um, we revert back to the chair and vice chair meeting with staff to set the agenda. That agenda will then go out to the board as soon as you've done it, and the board will have seventy days or something. 72 hours is fine. Yeah, because we have a tight... hours to add things. And um, that's all. And, of course... We don't have to say it in the motion, but motions can still be brought out at the agenda review before each meeting. Jeff, can you have a meeting within that amount of time? Uh, so I was just trying to think. 72 hours before next Wednesday afternoon would be, it's this has to be done this by this Friday. No, then. we have to have the agenda out one week one before. Week before. Oh. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should. That's why I'm saying 24 hours. Uh, that the three days would just mean that we only have two days to come up with the agenda. Yep. Well. It's also possible that that will change when we're no longer having meetings the second Wednesday of each month. True, but we're just dealing with this one right now. Oh, so you're only wanting to do it for one meeting? <laughs> I thought you wanted to do it for, I thought you wanted to just do it, just go back to having the agenda. Yes, that board. portion of it, but this will be the only one where it goes out for to the, all the board. For, to all the board, because uh, Am I correct in that the original bylaws is that the, I think, I think the chair, vice chair, and staff make the agenda and it goes out? I am hearing two ideas here. Yes. I think one is um, that we would go back to the bylaws, which yes. state that the an agenda committee comprised of the chair and vice chair shall meet prior to each meeting in consultation with staff to establish the agenda for the meeting subject to public notice provisions. There would be no checking right. then. There's no draft agenda. Right. And the other idea is we still have the committee, but they submit a draft agenda with the opportunity for feedback prior to establishing the final. Well, and what I'm trying to avoid is, I believe the reason why we switched to this way, which has its own problems, is because so many people then had things they wanted to add. And so you can go ahead and do that, that's fine, and if that's the vote it gets, it carries. But then there's, I'm expecting that there will still be lots of people at the last minute who have um, things they want to add. So we can try it and see how it goes. 
Yeah, again, the hope is in our process as we get better that we're not waiting till the last minute to jam pack everything, that we actually have a healthy process of getting as many in that we can so that it's nice and structured and that it becomes the exception to the rule that you do last minute motions. And just real quick, before the agenda meeting happens, we would still give any motions that we would want to give to put on the agenda. Right. And I wouldn't anticipate that anyone's motion would not be applied right. within time constrictions, obviously. Right. So but something just like this one is that everybody's got on there that that had given um, it was only the ones that uh, like about an hour before the meeting that you had a couple more you wanted to add to it. Um, so those would be last minute ones that were added just like we did today. So yes, I move. Um, I'm going to make a motion. Then. I'm assuming you have more discussion. Well, I just want to have a quick discussion. I mean, can we just make the move? The motion is just to revert to yes. the yeah. previous, yep. and it's simple. And yep. you understand that we can still mm -hmm. give those motions yep. prior to the agenda meeting, mm -hmm. so they get on there. Okay. So I move to um, uh, revert back to the original bylaws on our agenda making. I'll second that. Any discussion? That was for you. Good job. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And, and it's unanimous. Okay, so next item, meeting structure. Um, Judy, this was from you. Yeah, so before I actually make a motion, I wanted to uh, mention my thinking about this. So I'm concerned that we're spending a disproportionate time on process and not enough time on actual housing issues, which is actually what we're supposed to be doing. So I would like to see us all go forward with housing issues while we still are attending to process. And recognizing that we're on TV on the fourth Wednesday and that Adam and I are gonna be doing publicity, hopefully so more people will know and watch it and possibly attend, I'd really like that to be focused on actual housing issues and have the second Wednesday, for as long as we need it, be more about process and, um, and, and related functions like orientations that aren't pertinent to um, issues that we have to deliberate on. Discussion? Just quickly, I would just say um, somehow in your motion uh, that we preface that we're not going to have bi-monthly meetings. In other words, at some point we're going to come to an end on that. Right, and that's uh, the wording of it. I had, yeah, until, right. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. then we're done with process, right. too. We won't be having to discuss process all the time. Well, right. <laughs> so. Right. So, yeah, okay, yeah, just so what we're. So I'll, I'll add my thoughts on it. I thought a lot about this, and um, personally, we're essentially restarting our, our start, and um, we're right in the middle of building the house, and I, mean, I shouldn't say building the house. Um, process to me is a lot like coming up with the, the plan so that we can actually build a really solid house. So it's a little heavy intensive right now because we weren't getting it for the first um, couple of meetings that we had. So um, every time, um, I feel like it's too strict to just say it's only gonna happen on the second and the fourth. Um, because we're gonna have process issues each time as we're figuring this out and learning because we're a brand new board. Um, and like Jacques said, it's not gonna be, uh, we're not gonna have bi-monthly and we also have the facilitator on the 8th. So I feel like I get where you're going that you want more content to happen, um, but this to me is one of those examples of when you try to regulate to get to where you wanna go versus just allowing uh, this to kind of shake out in the beginning so that we can get to the content. So I, I'm, I'm a no on sticking to it. So I have, oh. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Adam, your thoughts? I also understand what you're saying. Uh, I think it's just a, a thing of making a point that we have some housing related issue that we discuss mm -hmm. on the fourth Wednesday meeting because people are watching us and I'm sure they want to hear something about housing and not entirely about process. So mm -hmm. that's just, I think, a point that the agenda should reflect when we make the agenda. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll, mess, I'll mention, um, 
I think it's really crucial that while we're doing process, we actually do what the board, what the city council asked us to do. And we have plenty of housing issues to talk about. Our, um, just the things we're already envisioning for the year are pretty important. And um, I'd also, I just don't think it's um, as exciting for the public to watch us talk about process. And we're just trying to build public engagement. And I think we need to really take advantage of being, um, having Channel 8 uh, uh, archiving us and showing us live. And I think we certainly, obviously there's going to be some little process things that come up, but I'd like us to have our focus be on housing issues at the fourth Wednesday and then focus all our meetings, all our second Wednesday meetings or special sessions on process issues. And when we're done with the bulk of process, then that's when we can stop the Wednesday meetings. I, I don't like the idea of discussing housing issues on the second Wednesday of each month when people are not as aware of it and don't have the opportunity to engage mm -hmm. in the same way. Can't watch it on TV. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely hear you, and I understand what you're saying. Um, and I do believe, uh, I completely agree that the public wants to see us doing housing stuff. Um, I think they would also like to see a functioning, healthy board that's making quality decisions. And um, so I'm, I totally understand where, where you're at. We're just five meetings behind on setting up a good, a good process. And again, I do think that on the 8th and... Um, uh, on the 8th and with the next couple of meetings, this will be a moot issue, so I don't feel like it needs to be a motion, but it's a point well taken and something that we can address while we're doing the agendas. From my side, I think that, um, I think it is a point well taken that we, you know, especially on these Wednesdays, we need to mm -hmm. be focusing on that. I also don't know that we need to make it a motion. I think that we can just recognize that we need to bring actual content outside of our processes and focus that to the Wednesday um, meetings. Great. So I would like to go ahead and make it a motion. And if nobody yeah. seconds it, right. that's fine. And I'll be on record as having made the motion. And that's cool. Yeah. You want to make the I, actually I, say the motion? I, I make, yeah, I make the motion <laughs> that we focus as much as we possibly can our fourth Wednesday meetings of each month on housing issues and that we focus all second Wednesday meetings or special sections sessions on process issues until we've got the bulk of process done and we can dispense with the second Wednesday meetings. I will second. Okay, any discussion? No. Um, so we take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Okay. And nay. Okay. Um, so next action item. Source of income, this is also Judy, Section 8, Ordinance 8249. Discuss issue of affordable housing residents. If I may just clarify, I added the Ordinance 8249 in the word source of income. I believe the proposal was to discuss the Section 8, which I understood to refer to Council's discussion of an ordinance um, establishing a non-discrimination proposal for a uh, requirement on source of income for um, tenants and landlords. So, yep, Judy. Yeah, so this, this is actually, it can be two separate motions or it can be one motion um, together. I'm interested in having a special committee formed of which I'd be happy to be the sole person on it or see if anyone else wants to be on it to discuss two things. And again, it can be in separate committees or it can be one together. And one is city council is going to be looking at um, Section 8 housing, trying to make that a protected class for um, landlords, just like race, gender, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'd like to look into that and come up with some thoughts to the board at the next possible meeting, perhaps August. 22nd. Um, and the other is, besides the AMI, which I completely agree with pursuing, I'd like to have a small committee look into 
affordable housing issues for residents, uh, including some of the things we talked about, like amenities, um, parking, things like that, and come up with a way forward that Adam and I have already worked on. But if we don't get it all accomplished today, have a committee continue with that. Okay, so those are two big different issues. So let's start with the Section 8 one. And do you want to start with a motion so that we can second it and have a discussion? Sure. I okay. move mm -hmm. that we form a special temporary committee to look into the Section 8 housing issue as covered by, it is covered by that ordinance? That's the one? Yes, that's correct. The, the Human okay. Relations Commission has proposed that council pass an ordinance that covers a variety of things, one of which is protections based on source of income. And so I'm interested in that aspect, um, 8249, ordinance 8249. I second. And discussion? I don't want to be on the committee, but I think that is a great idea, <laughs> and I really am interested in hearing what you have to bring to the board. Okay. And I'm with Adam. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Cool. But I, I agree. I read the article stuff, too. I, I agree with you. I think it's a... Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, uh, that leaves me to back you up, and I think it's probably valuable that you have some backup, so... She's got a research assistant. Oh, that's right. You met yeah. her. You met, <laughs> you she's met her. her. You met her, but I you do it, you know. Well, no, I, I, I'm, I'm welcome to be engaged with that Thank also. you. Okay. If you wish. Cool. So just, okay. I'll, I can help you out. Okay. Jeff? I just want to point out that given that it is on um, a matter that has been prepared for council, there's a lot of materials and staff have been working on it. I cannot promise anyone else's staff availability, but um, I, I would recommend a, as a quick starting point, making that connection and I can facilitate that. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So did we vote on that or did um, we vote? So you made the motion, and we got it seconded. We had discussion, so yes, now we would. This would be for the forming of the committee. Yes, the forming of the special committee. Judy made the motion for the forming of the second committee. It was seconded by me, and we'll vote on it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Nays? Obviously, I don't know why I asked. Um, <laughs> okay, and now your second piece. So the second piece was, um, besides the AMI issue, um, that has been that's come up before the city and affecting a lot of people in affordable housing, the residents of affordable housing. There are a number of additional issues like amenities, et cetera, that Adam and I had sent to the board. And however far we get with that, if we don't come to conclusion about it, that the committee do further work on looking into information. Okay. And I'm Do you want that a special committee, or are you looking a for a special. long term? Special. Short okay. Special. Thank you, special. Special. <laughs> special. Okay. Do you want to make that motion? Can I just say so moved? <laughs> I have to say the whole thing. Okay. I move that we form a special committee that would look into and report um, at the August 22nd meeting um, about issues affecting affordable housing residents. A second discussion this is just a continuation of what we've already had mm -hmm. we just want to try to format it so we can come to a conclusion as a board on things that we can actually recommend Amen. to council agreed so just um just one item is on august 22nd you're going to have housing issues and solutions so how will that inform the discussion then you're going to have right, how about later it? How about that's my hope, and we'll see when we get to the uh, to the agenda talks, um, okay. or and um, I'll just leave it open ended for now. Okay. Cool. So the motion now doesn't have a date. Do you want to restate it without the date, and then we can go on it? I move <laughs> that we form a committee, special special committee, to look into. Um, housing issues for uh, ho affordable housing issues for residents um, as we've already begun. Second. And vote? Yep. Or do we need a discussion? Uh, I think we're good. Okay. Discussion. Vote. All in favor? Aye. And does anyone want to be on the committee with you? I would like to. Okay. Great. So on the committee then is Judy and Adam um, on this special committee 
for affordable housing renter issues. For um, clarification, is this the same as the issue listed under E double I one? Yes. Okay. Yes, and the reason it was listed there is because. It's fine. Just okay. wanted to be clear. Yep. Yeah, we put yep. it there. Um, we Mostly for the record. Yes, for the. You were going to put it on the 822 agenda. Got yes. it. Yes, because we wanted to put it on the yeah. 822, but now we're extenuating, extending yep. it out. So just so that also everybody's clear, when we do these special committees and committees that um, these now are gonna go on to the agenda item and will be updated, like you'll have space to update each meeting. Each, each meeting. meeting. Yeah, but I have a question. The, I'm looking at a short committee mm -hmm. with action right. soon. So you just said we were gonna do it at 22nd, but now you're extenuating? I'm no, no, no. Originally, when you first reached out to me and wanted me to put this on the agenda, your email said, I would like to discuss this tonight for August 22nd, so I put it on right. here so it wouldn't get dropped. Right. But you, we've removed the date from this motion that we just had so we that you could- We removed the date from the motion, but I'd still like to discuss it August 28th. And we can and yeah. put that Which on I the just, agenda okay. when okay. we do the agenda. <laughs> okay. Which I just said, all committees, special committees and committees will be discussed every meeting because they fall under committee reports. So they have a standing- Yeah, but I'm not hoping to have a committee meeting then. I would like to suggest we actually finish the discussion then. That's up to us. Right. So that's what we bring to the board on that date. Right. We're going to have a standing spot every single meeting. So we can discuss so it August 8th and we, say we want it on the agenda for August 22nd? It's going to be on the agenda August 22nd because it's a special committee. So if, if I may. Yes, please. Um, You're good at this and she likes it. So. A substantive conversation like that should be noticed properly. It shouldn't, it, if it comes up as a committee, we've, we've, um, we've had a conversation. We think this is really important. We need to structure a conversation. It needs to go on the agenda. It could be the committee report, but it, having the discussion on the 22nd without having it noticed would be problematic. Yeah. So that's why I'm wondering if you can tell us when council is discussing um, uh, the rising rents for affordable housing residents. So council received the uh, information packet item on June 28th and has to my knowledge, no council members have expressed an interest in having that conversation to staff. So, so it's, it's not, not scheduled. Okay, cool. The, okay. To the best of my knowledge. So you know, um, have, just for clarity yeah. about the first piece that you had about the committee reports and su substantive information, uh, this is just more of a personal question. Mm -hmm. How is it on the original agenda where it just literally says um, committee reports and we are going into more detail? Um, is that a bad thing? Am I hearing you right? I'm making a distinction between a report. Here's what we've learned. Here's what we've. Here's what we have. We think is important to talk about and having the, the policy question discuss policy discussion. Going beyond a report out and saying, um, let's decide if these three things are worthy of us recommending to council. That crosses a line. Okay. So it, it, uh, in this agenda, then, um, the, the original agenda, um, that would have been listed. So, like, say, engagement had said um, that they had some. Uh, something big that came up that would have been listed here. I think that is the better practice. Okay, yes. great. So, so what we're talking about? Okay. Has the opportunity to know you're going to be talking about it and connect with you in one of many ways, including attending the meeting. Okay, and that so then that um, for future practices is that we're looking for like a small couple sentences to describe what's going to happen on that one as well. So in well, any of the committees for best practices, we'd wanna get into a routine um, along with the motions that you know before that week that you need to produce a couple of sentences on your committees for the agenda. And determining what we wanna do. Is it a discussion? Is it a recommendation? Is it if something If it's to vote? anything beyond literally just telling you what we did over the last right. couple yep. days, it needs to be a couple noted. sentence yeah. description. So uh, best practices. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure exactly where I draw the line. If huh. it's me, um, I would say if I'm if I'm if I'm on a committee, I'm saying here's what we're wrestling with. Here's what we've learned. Um, you have any questions? You have any guidance for us? That all feels like 
a standing item that probably doesn't need an extended description. If it's, as a committee, we recommend the board discuss this substantively, that's and different, yeah. and that should be described in the agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it can either be scheduled as a separate agenda item, or you can choose to bring it up under the committee discussions. You know, it's not just a report then, it's also an agenda item. Great. And, um, yeah. and then at least the public has a chance to know you're likely talk about it. Fantastic, so that'll be um, best practices then as we move forward. Got it. Um, okay, so we've got done that. Um, that ends our, oh, no member. We see, I almost forgot to, the new member. You wanted to discuss the new member. Yes. Um, yes, I think it would be really helpful if we discussed and then uh, made a recommendation to council and had you tell us, Jeff, the best way to, to do that of, um, of our preference for, for how soon we wanted a council member added. And I would be just as happy if we did it, if we recommended to them that they appoint a new member as soon as possible, um, because I think it's otherwise too possible that we get stuck in 2-2 two -two votes. And I think it's good to have two, five, two, 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 two. Oh, two, two. two, two. Oh, I was like, what's a two, two vote? <laughs> Where we wear our little ballerina clothes and dance around. No, uh, uh, yeah. I, I, so I would like to recommend that, but I want to discuss before we make a motion. Okay. Just, yep. the, you know, I'm no expert, but the, I think the proper way to do it is make a motion to recommend to council that they appoint a housing advisory board replacement member as soon as possible. And then if there's a second, there'll be discussion. If there's no second, then there won't be. Okay. Hey. That was Jeff, okay. So moved. Jeff will be our formal motion <laughs> I, maker. Um, I gotta do I some learning here. <laughs> He's our formal motion maker from now I move on. that the board recommends to city council that we would, we respectfully appreciate a new board member being appointed as soon as possible. Second? Discussion. Second. Discussion. Discussion. Huh? Go ahead. Okay, um, I can go either way on this. Obviously, I want as many brains in here as possible, but I also fear adding another personality when we've already had our current issues. <laughs> um, so it's two sides of a coin mm -hmm. to me. If I may. Yes, I'm sorry. Add my two cents. Um, I also have a couple sides to the coin, maybe three. That's not uh, the coin. Love to have the brains in here, as Adam just said, and I feel like, especially with special committees, et cetera, et cetera, we're kind of Act. diluting ourselves. I mean, you know, how do we handle it? Um, the other side of that is, I do think we have an opportunity here before, as you said, a new member comes in to help us solidify our process and culture somewhat so that when that new person does come in um, there is some basis culture that's set and and they have a stronger foundation to stand on when they step into the board um, the longer longer term one is there's a certain piece to me that that says you know if council is going to take the amount of time I think they may take to get to this anyway um, there's also some benefit potentially of, you know, and again, we don't know if it's going to happen, but if there is going to be a seven, there's some potential benefit to those three members being selected by council simultaneously mm -hmm. um, so that they can Buddy play up. with their kind of energies of who they're putting on and, and kind of the, the conditions. Keep in mind, they only have a one year term too, so they could be selecting oh. four members. So just one uh, moment. Well, okay. I don't know how we do this now, but there was that point that I wanted to bring up. Yeah. So, then, so then that actually actually changes do you want to not have a board member come in soon and get acquainted and acculturated with how we do things and then have or and or maybe have four members which would double our size if you decide not to not to stay on the board then there would be possibly four new board members coming in because you would be leaving and we would be the only three remaining does that actually seem like a better option to you, or wouldn't it be better to have a new member come around right away 
and at least have the option of three two votes rather than oh. two two votes. And what I really wanted to do was I wanted to suggest that Adam's term would be shifted to, to the two year term. If you wanted to, if you wanted I would, to, I'm not pushing around. I personally would love to see you stay <laughs> on. So I yeah. feel like I w if. I, if we were able, I mean, mind you, none of these, we don't have any, any ability, of yeah, not, none of, no control over any of this, but what I'd like to see is if, if we, because we're a new board and maybe somehow we make it a recommendation to city council that if we work this hard to codify and um, put these in place and you are willing to stay on, to me that would just go towards making this a much richer experience um, and a, a huge benefit and, to being able to continue with the four of us creating that culture. And my hope is, as you saw in my email, is that we create something that makes it so exciting for other people to want to participate in this that you know we have a large turnout. But if you're interested, and I'd love to make the recommendation to City Council that you move up and that yes, we're interested in another member. I'm with Jacques. I don't think it's going to happen until board selection. They have so much on their plate right now. But that's. I think that we shouldn't be assuming how they think, and I think they would be really happy with the input of how we feel about this. Yeah. And and I, as I said, they can just simply appoint someone. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and I don't want to put you on the spot with having to give that, make that decision unless you're positive. You already know, but I know you have. You know, that's a, a big decision. A yeah. yeah. Jeff? I'm wondering, Crystal, have you had any experience with vacancies and how yeah. um, they, that would be useful to this mm -hmm. conversation? Yeah. As, um, as a council member, I do recall that we had a vacancy soon after a recruitment. And we just looked at the applications and we selected a member from the applications because the application pool was quite rich for this board so that's one thing that the city council could be doing I would say you know I know you're trying to develop a culture and get the work done but if you end up in a situation of a 2-2 vote if you know the motion will fail and that could happen on a number of things it would be better I think just civically to have a full board and hopefully you'll get two new members if the public sees that there's benefit to that. I think that having a five member board is problematic because you're depending on everybody making every meeting. Mm -hmm. So back to his original question though, you did have a board that lost and then how did you guys actually handle it? Oh, we had number, a number of boards where we lost people mid-term. Um, mid and so right now I believe there are a number of, of vacancies and they'll often do a mid-term recruitment and filling. Okay. You know, the so other thing, again, once I, how do you guys handle it? Did you just recommend that? Right. So did you request did you, of council? Oh, we no, I wasn't on the board. I was on you're city on, council. You're on yeah, council. that's what I'm yeah. saying. Is on yeah. city council that's when you were on city council and you lost a board member, what did you guys do in that? The moment? city the staff would usually say, you know, we have another we have an opening, we have three openings, we'll have a, you know, we've got want to look at some dates to do a recruitment. Now if we had just done a recruitment, I think we just went through the applications mm -hmm. and we had a council meeting and and uh, filled that board. And then it's a little trickier asking Adam to, uh, asking council to move Adam up, because you can reapply next year. For yeah, five more, but, true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for five more, and you might not be interested in that. You could just, <laughs> that's something that you could write to council. I'd be interested in filling Leonard's term, having the new appointee fill a one-year term, and they can reapply for five right. years. I mean, I think you could do that as an individual, and if yeah, the board think, wanted to support that. I think there's some weight behind the fact, too, that if we made the recommendation, again, knowing that um, from what Aaron had said on the city council is uh, uh, that they have the option of doing, it's just kind of like making this recommendation if, of whether or not we want the seat filled right away, is um, they don't have to... Uh, the board can make a they can make a recommendation as to whether that happens sooner than regular appointment time by March. You also do not have to make a final decision. Many times the board goes several months without missing a member. 
Um, it will take council some time to consider the matter and decide how to proceed. So if you think the position should fill be, be filled before then, it would be good to get their attention fairly soon or else by the time they can find agenda time to discuss before March. So we're just making a recommendation. And to me, if you're interested in that, we also include the recommendation because you have my endorsement to stay for all five years I, if you'd yeah. like. I, I would be happy with that too, but I would really like to give Adam yeah, have that be a separate time. thing and give Adam some time to think on that. Well, That's a big thing. Yeah. I think he could answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> answer if whether or not he wants time to think about it. I would love it. some time to think about <laughs> okay, it. Okay, so that. That's what I'm saying. He's let him answer whether or not he wants time. <laughs> Right. But you're going to be a little bit of time out of here. You, yeah. You're going to have a month or two to develop. Exactly. Hopefully the culture and the processes and everything. Right. Before I, can, I can tell you in two weeks. Fantastic. Well, I move that we... I think we have a motion on the oh, we do have yeah. a motion on the table. Yeah, so the motion is I, I would really like to move that we let council know that we would like a new... Uh, member to replace Leonard as soon as they possibly can. I think that'd be to our benefit. That doesn't include anything about me, Kurt. It doesn't include anything about you. That's why I'm processing, because I'm thinking about how it goes. And I, I do believe that motion was seconded, so it's yeah. open for decision. It hasn't been amended. So um, does anybody have anything else to discuss? Is there any ability to table that motion until that's, the next meeting? That's what I was mm -hmm. going to, or do we just vote what on you it? Do if you, if you make a motion make to table, then the motion has, then the tabling motion has to be voted on with no discussion, as I recall from yeah. Robert's rules. Mm -hmm. gotcha. for, and for what purpose? Like what would that do? For him. You get, oh, but it's, it's, a make separate, it's a separate thing, isn't it? What? You mean as if, if there be four new board members? But if I think if we do a recommendation, mm -hmm. it's one recommendation, and I want to come back later and then say, oh, and by the way, can we also have uh, Adam take the two-year term? So I'm, I'm, that's why I would I suggest see. that we would table it and then or come withdraw back. your motion this time, and we make it next time um, with full information. Yeah, I'd like to also add that. The board that the city council did pick five people, not four, and for us to operate um, as four longer than we need to, if council would be ready to move quicker, I don't think is um, is appropriate for us to do. So I'm happy to have you all table it and discuss it next time, but I'm still recommending that uh, that that part of it we do. So right now there's no amendment. motion has to be tabled. right now there's no amendment if she's not to it. she's right. not willing to um, withdraw it or and there's really no amending it it's just tabling it well you can amend your motion as but long as I don't I, I, I she's not I, I, look at, I look at Adam's you have, you have two options now as I see it one is to move to table and take the vote and see if that tables it or not if it doesn't, or if you choose, no one makes that motion, then you vote. Okay, so, so on the existing motion in this yeah. realm, then I make a, I move to table this motion until our next meeting on the eighth of August. Second. Anybody want to discuss? No discussion. I don't think there's discussion oh, allowed. So, so then vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Nay. I'm pretty much turning out to be the lone wolf in lots of things here tonight. <laughs> and so three in favor of tabling it till August 8th and uh, one nay, Judy, um, for the motion of recommending new member to the board. So you will have the motion that Judy made on your agenda for the 8th. 40th, yeah. Correct. And at that point, I'll intend to make an amendment to that motion regarding whatever the hell I'm going to do with my life. <laughs> You're going to be here for the rest of your life like us. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so then we're on to agenda <laughs> review. Um, the first item on the agenda review before we dive into future agenda and work plan is the next, next week. So um, we have location, which we're thinking is the library, correct? Yes? Okay, so... 
August 8th. Um, is it right to call it retreat? Is it a retreat? And since we're doing a special meeting in the beginning of it, because we have a couple of items that, yeah. um, so we're going to have a couple of items like uh, um, the vote, the tabled item right now that we have. I don't think you need to call it anything. It will be a meeting open to the public. It will have some agenda items. The primary agenda item is going to be however you decide to structure your discussion and, and or decision making around goals and priorities and work plan. Okay, so then since we voted to move back to the original bylaws on the agenda, then we don't have to do an agenda meeting here right now. In fact, um, uh, everybody would be getting their stuff to us before the next meeting, correct? Um, and we'll by be taking, next Wednesday. Yep, yeah. and um, we'll be taking the stuff that we have from this meeting that needs to be kerplunked into that one. Right. So, I just want to go over what we already have yep. on the agenda for next yep. meeting. The so right now we have the vote for, um, so this is for August 8th meeting, the uh, items that we know for sure we're going to be covering, which... You would have, here's what I have recorded, the two um, you've specifically said would be elections for chair and vice chair and then consideration of a motion to recommend appointing a new member. Um, you would typically have minute approval, but you, there's not an urgency to that since you meet twice a month at this point. So if you wanted to postpone that, you could. Um, if you want to stay on top of it, you could do that too. It usually doesn't take you long to do that. You will have public participation, um, and then you can have, I know of no matters from staff, no council um, items, um, so it would be matters from the board, and you can decide what you want there. I, my understanding is that you want a robust and significant discussion with the facilitator about your priorities, goals, and work plan. Boom. Thank you, Jeff. Anything else anybody wants to add? For, for the eighth, for the yes. meeting eighth. So the work plan that somebody passed out. Um, yeah. That will be our next action item we're talking about. Oh, that's something we're talking about yeah. now. Next, it's okay. yeah. the next thing on the agenda. Okay. But um, so this is just for August eighth. You want to take something from the work plan and put it on the agenda for August 8th? Is that? No, I'm happy to wait till work plan. Okay. okay. Thank you for that clarity. Appreciate that. Uh, so I think that's, um, and then what we'll do is we get together, you and I will set a time then for, and anything else that anybody's emailed us. By Maybe. when? Uh, so everybody has to have their could, could we could I suggest yes, by the end of Tuesday of next week so and we'll find time on Tuesday Wednesday first to set the agenda yes okay so it, Tuesday the 31st then Jeff and I will meet on Wednesday the first and you guys will have an email shortly thereafter well at that point we would be publishing the agenda that's how we left it yeah. okay yeah. got it yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So everybody, and that means, um, yeah, anything that you need to put on there, send it to us before then with your uh, um, action requested, little byline, anything like that has to be included. Is that good? Everybody good on that? Just, yes. um, Mason, just a clarification. So on the 8th, uh -huh. You're going to have those agenda items, and then you're going to have goals and priorities, but not work plan uh, on the eighth. Well, it could be under goals, part of our work plan, but I don't think that that would move over for a facilitator, would it? I'm not sure what you want to accomplish. Um, I think I know we'll that out with her. Okay. So th there's been, you have at least in two meetings um, listed out things you want to accomplish as a board. You had the survey trying to put it out by years. Um, yeah. I think it's collecting what I understand is, uh, and I'm speculating here or making assumptions, is that you want to take all of that and massage it into the next iteration, hopefully with some more clarity about how you will, what you want to spend your time on. Yep. Maybe that could become a look at the work plan items and scheduling things too. Maybe not. Yep. I don't know. 
And I think that'll be sussed out both in our paragraphs and emails that are sent to her as well as the prep work she does and then once we get there and start working on it. For us, so it was making it a little bit harder to plan for me anyway, when I was looking at it. So you can see that we've got the months up on the top and then um, very clear what is HAB business, what is in front of the council for their work plan. And um, and I guess the HAB business portion of it is the presentation stuff that's coming, that kind of, that's being presented to us, right? I think that's a fairly, can be fairly broad. It could be, you know, maybe you want to have a discussion about how you communicate. It may be um, each year the expectation is that boards will provide a letter to council on their goals for the coming year. That's so a that business, business item. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to revise your bylaws, that would be a okay. business item. Um, so there would be some that are scheduled, some that you would propose. Um, the one above that would be, what do you want to work on? Priorities. The one, the very top one is, what has council already directed the city mm -hmm. organization to work on mm -hmm. that your um, your role is to provide advice, consider and provide advice on? So w what we were thinking is that it would help with, um, you know, we all have our priorities and things that we're interested in doing, but this way it starts, you can start to fill in the boxes and see how much in a month that we tr we're trying to accomplish as well. So it was just a suggestion on a different format and you can see underneath it, the items that still need to be scheduled that we need to put in there. And um, and then under that were some of the proposed agenda idea I items and ideas that we've kind of talked about as well wanting to put in. So that would be have priorities and the items to be scheduled are um, business, right? I, I think that's a fine way to look at it, yeah, yeah. So again, just a, um, it's just another format instead of it being all in one line because that's how, what we had before was just a month listed, remember the original work plan? Um, and it was hard to see where we were going to put stuff in, but it was just a suggestion. If it, I mean, I don't know if you want to add anything to it, Jeff, or anything. Um, two observations. One is the um, timing of the council work plan items is the timing it would come to you. Typically, it's going to council the following month, not you know that. And then, um, the, other than that, I don't think I made any changes to what you have already seen. It was just so it's a reorganization to try and show, you know, the top line you don't control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You only control whether you want to weigh in or not. Middle line is all you, dependent on resources to support you and whether you choose to need, want the support or not. Bottom line, some of the things you, you're kind of expected to do, a lot of it's your choice. So what we were also thinking is that this potentially could be used um, for goal setting with uh, Heidi on August 8th is like taking a look at this and seeing how we want to fill in, um, if we want to put our goals in and see how they fit as well. So I have a question. I guess I'm not familiar with what the joint board meeting is with Alpine Balsam. Who, joint? Who? That's your last agenda item tonight. There was a memo on it. It's um, 8A tonight. So the um, request that you'll be considering is to it's appoint memorandum. ideally two members to a meet with members appointed from other boards to consider Alpine Balsam. So that won't be all of us doing, there'll be two members going That's to correct. a joint meeting. That's correct. That's not a whole board thing. It is not. It would become a special committee during the time period of Alpine Balsam. Yes, I think that's as I understand it. Yeah, I, so, I think the way I presented so it isn't clear, so thank you, Judy. Yeah. Yes, just um, the annual letter, just a suggestion. You should probably start that in November, November. quite frankly, because they want it in. You know, they the city manager's office has got very tight time frame, and just from the experience of doing that on planning board, takes a takes a discussion, takes some emails, then it takes kind of formatting, writing the mm -hmm. annual letter, taking all the ideas. That you all have agreed on. Thank you. Yeah, good idea. Um. And one other thing is, do you all get the weekly calendar that's sent out by planning? We had discussed you, getting that once before. Um, I'll start sending it out, but I thought you that had, they were on the. Did you say that you're going to put us on the list or well, something? Well, no, I thought the staff said you were on the list. So you guys were on that 
uh, distribution and somehow got pulled off and it was just brought to my attention the other day. So I'll have to follow up with Cindy, which I did. Um, however, she is out of yeah. town this week on vacation. Um, she won't be back until sometime early next week. Um, so I'm expecting a return email from her. So at the next meeting, I can give you an update. Thank I'll you. send you. Or I can email you when I find out what's going on. Thank that you. Might be and easier. I'll send you last week's and then this week's. And I bring it up because um, it has every board, including council, that has anything that's a planning issue. And you might be able to take a look at it, circle the things that have to do with, um, with you know, the housing mission, and then maybe add it across the top, or if you see if some discussion's going to another board. So yeah. maybe what, if she sends it to us, then you and I can take a look at it and see how it fits into this um, to send out uh, um, with the agenda stuff. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense? Condense it down into send a it to you now. I mean, everybody. Actually, yeah, I was going to say, if you send it out to everybody, there is a limitation on it because by the time it gets scheduled, you already kind of want to know about it and have it on your work plan. Yeah. So, um, as the staff is, for example, pr preparing the project, which will be developing subcommunity planning, mm -hmm. what's the role of the various boards and commissions? You should be, you know, and that should happen without you having to do anything, ideally. Right. And the request that usually would come from staff to staff to say, okay, this is coming, when can we get on the board? Okay. Um, and it's not a bad idea to look at what's on there, especially for a new board and say, you know, like for example, the, um, the um, uh, Human Relations Commission proposed ordinance that Judy has pointed out, that has a clear housing component and it didn't, yeah. that, that connection didn't get made. Mm -hmm. So monitoring is probably a really good idea. Great. So she's sending it out to us. Go ahead. I, I just have a question. So I think that's an excellent idea. I would like to be more clear on monitored how. Will it just go to us in general and anyone who notices it will mention it? Or do we really want to pick a person who follows all that stuff and said, hey, we may want to pay? Do you see what I mean? I can see that information going out to us and just being, oh, well, I don't have time to read it myself today. I'll let somebody else worry about it and it getting lost. So I'd like sort of an action plan of who's going to follow that. Okay. No. <laughs> or, no. I was just going to say that to me personally, I like several eyes on stuff. Like, I yeah. mean, how many eyes were on this one and, and we didn't catch it? So it was like, or HRC. So I, I feel like everybody should always take a look at things. Yeah, that but that out. leaves it that leaves it to not happening. So well, if, if you would, as board chair, let us all know when stuff is going on. I just feel more concrete. What if I don't know what's going on? you get we're all getting that information right we will be hopefully. yeah i think it would be a good thing to put in someone's plate chair or vice chair or mm -hmm. someone else who volunteers to do that but then of course all of us are right. also getting it and looking right. at it but um if they're yeah, i don't mind know, doing it during agenda yeah. when we're setting up the agenda looking at it see if there's anything yeah. we need to flag right and typically that would be two of you then the chair and the vice chair that yeah. would have right, share that responsibility in those meetings yeah. thank you okay. Um, okay, so I guess the work plan, do we want to make a motion to move the work plan to this? Do we have to make a motion to move this work plan to this? So I'm not comfortable with the work plan um, or discussing it in detail until after we've done the facilitation because there's too many little topics here that I don't understand and, too, and I'm not comfortable with the poll that we took being taken as what our priorities are that wasn't done with my knowledge, I would have voted completely differently. There wasn't the part on it to put our comments, and I'd have voted completely differently. So I'm not, I'm not you, comfortable. I think that we're just talking about the format, though. Yeah. That it's just that. We're not talking about putting the items in. Just we're just talking. I I don't even know if it's a motion thing necessarily, yeah. but we're just talking about. Do we want to use this kind of format? format or do you I want know, to but I've already had the feeling that sometimes things are as format, then the next day 